doubling up the Knowles Tebow in that game. It. Tebow would have blocked it. Yeah, because he's Superman. That's right. All right, it's Washington State, Washington. Jake Locker will play. Is that a good decision in your mind by the Huskies or not? Bittersweet for me because I love that power running attack that they used to beat Cal with last week. But when, J when Jake Locker's in the lineup, they're going to run that spread option at a run defense for Washington State that can't stop the run. 163 yards they're allowing right now. But Washington State is going to test that Washington secondary all day long. As a Washington Husky, might you be so kind to put into perspective what a Husky thinks of a Cougar? Sean Bay Wright Fair, Drew Bledsoe. I'm still looking for you. I, I'm still looking for you. <laughs> Philip Bobo, you're mine. You're mine when I catch you. And you know what they're all saying? You never caught me. Oh, get out of here. You know, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, I'm just saying. All right, don't forget you can text your questions to DeMarco. Washington State, come on, bring it on to DeMarco at 310-739-7149. You're going to tell anybody on the field this game doesn't matter? You're going to get a fistful because it is for the Apple Cup. It's the Cougars and the Huskies. Washington, Washington State. The kickoff is coming up next right here on FSN. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera, the new value frontier. And brought to you in part by Jack Link's Jerky, Feed Your Wild Side, by Serve Pro. When water damage strikes, call the cleanup specialists at 1 800 Serve Pro. And by the new TiVo HD, the ultimate HD TV companion. Connecting you to your favorite sports. And we welcome you to Husky Stadium, one of a kind place. Yeah, you could boat in here. This is the 100th renewal of the Apple Cup, Washington State and Washington. This game is brought to you in stunning high definition by Hitachi. Right now gives us a chance before we kick it off to meet the third member of our broadcast team. Of course, you know him. Of course, you love him. He is Jim Watson. Waddy. Barry, the last time we saw Jake Locker, he was less than 100%. Remember, he took that headshot down at Reeser Stadium in Corvallis against Oregon State. He laid on the field for a long time. We were all very concerned. He was loaded in an ambulance, taken to the hospital. Turned out to be just a stinger, and eventually he did return to the sideline that night wearing a neck brace. Now, he could have played last week against Cal, but the coaches decided to hold him out. Monday, he met with the media, and he still looked to be pretty stiff and sore. Ah, oh, but it was all a joke. Jake Locker was downgrading that stinger to sarcasm. I'm just joking around with you guys. My neck feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Just another reason why we all have come to love Jake Locker. He's such a tremendous talent. He's a great kid, and he's still not afraid to have a little fun with football. What a concept. He is 100% healed, but there is a lasting effect, guys, and that is the coaches have told Jake Locker, we know you're a big dog. We know you don't like to shy away from contact, but hey, every now and then, it's okay to save yourself and just step out of bounds. I know it's good advice, Barry, but it's the Apple Cup, man. It's a backyard brawl. It'll all come down when it's face mask to face mask. Yeah, Wadi, well, thanks a lot. You know it's good advice, but you also know Jake Locker isn't going to do it. No, he's not going to do it, especially in the rivalry game, especially when he gets downfield and he's got a head of steam going. This guy would probably be a 1,500-yard running back if that's a position he played. He'd be an all pac 10 safety if that's a position he played. He's that kind of talent. And if you're a Wazoo linebacker, you better strap up when he's coming at you because he ain't going to slide. No, I think that's exactly right. You saw the poise that he has. As you look at Ty Willingham, and uh, Ty, needless to say, disappointed this year. Lost four games to uh, teams ranked in the top 15, and his team played the toughest, the single toughest schedule in America. They still have to go to Hawaii after this one. Turns out the Warriors are a pretty good football team as well. But Ty Willingham has got to go in a direction. Thought they would be a bowl team. And there you have Bill Doba, who's really had a tough year in Pullman, Washington. And one of the great guys. Uh, can't emphasize enough how much we enjoy uh, visiting with uh, Bill Doba, as you do with all the coaches at the Pac-10. But there's just something special about Bill and his staff at Washington State. They're all fine people because it's a different place. It's a different place to recruit. It's very remote, pastoral kind of area, Pullman, Washington, right there on the border with Idaho. And he's been there a long time and doing it for a long time. And we'll see what happens after this football game. But really a good coach and a well-respected man in the Pac-10. There's not a lot of people that don't like Bill Doe. No, you ask any coach about him, and, and they'll all tell you. I mean, this guy can coach. There is a lot of uh, talk, perhaps, that uh, he may be coaching his last game here today. Believe me, it's not for want of ability to coach the game of football. 
Wade Penner will do the kicking for the Washington State Cougars, and Lewis Rankin will be the deep man for the Washington Huskies. Rankin coming off a couple of outstanding football games. Yeah, he's been ripping off 200-yard performances, and Rankin has kind of been standing up and running, really getting vertical on teams as opposed to making too many moves. We'll see what he brings tonight. Proud to the person on its feet here at Husky Stadium as the 100th Apple Cup is just about set to get underway. Penner comes forward, drives this one short. Rankin runs up, takes it at the 11-yard line. Gets the 25, 30, got a gap for the 40 to the 45. One man to beat, it's the kicker. He's at the 40. He's the 25. He's gone. Rankin, touchdown, 89 yards. Rankin standing up and running. Watch what he does when he gets vertical. When he's going forward, that is when Rankin is very dangerous. Very subtle moves, changing direction, but not stopping his feet. And when this guy stands up and runs, there's not a lot of players like him in the Pac-10. Very, very fast, and what a great start on the kickoff return team for the Husky. Try for point is up and good, and we've played exactly 15 seconds. And it's a 7-0 Washington lead. Well, and of course, that also here at Husky Stadium keeps the crowd involved. And that's something that is very, very tough for a visiting team. Well, this is a frightening place to play. I never played here in an Apple Cup, but we came up and played here when I was at USC. And these fans look like they're going to fall onto you. And they bark and scream. And this will just get them going even more, just watching Rankin take off and push off those legs. He looks very fresh here at the end of the season. In fact, he's gotten stronger and stronger as the season's gone along. There was some questions about his ability and his seeing of holes and whatnot as the season was going on during that losing streak that the Huskies had, but he's really pulled it together toward the end of the season. Here. He saw that hole, didn't he? As a matter of fact, <laughs> to be honest with you, I didn't think it was particularly well blocked. He just got there before anybody else. Very fast, and when a guy can do that, when he eats up ground and he's coming at you that quickly, it's, it's really tough to break down and make the tackle. So Bill Doba all of a sudden finds himself on the short end of a 7 and nothing score. This team hadn't had the ball yet. They will get it now as Ryan Perkins around the ball. Jared Ballman prepares to kick it away. The deep man for Washington State is Christopher Ivory. Here's Ballman's kick, a high end over end kick. Ivory will handle it at the five yard line. Tries to get the outside. And he's got some room, knocked out of bounds as he crosses the 30 yard line. And Washington State will have the ball on offense for the first time. Trailing seven to nothing after the 89 yard kick return by Lewis Rankin. Here's the Kyocera offensive lineup for the Washington State Cougars. Alex Brick, of course, the quarterback. He'll be throwing a lot to Brandon Gibson. They have two outstanding receivers in Gibson and Bumpus. And they'll spread you out. I think it's important for Washington State to be able to set the tone with running the football. This is Ivory. Tries to bounce it outside, gets a little room, a flag comes in. Ivory picked up about five, but let's see about the flag. Holding offense number 55. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Well, they got Vaughn Lasuma on that one, and it looked like he kind of pinned his man in and allowed Ivory to get that edge. Not an auspicious start for the Washington State Cougars. Defensively, the Kyocera lineups for the Washington Huskies. You'll see E.J. Savannah all around the ball today. Very quick to the ball. Leading tackler on this Huskies team. First down. 20. He gave us to Ivory again. He didn't get much. Just about back to the line of scrimmage, not much more than that. And because the Cougs do not have a dominant running back, they're just going to run the ball enough in this football game to 
keep the Huskies honest defensively, and they will really try to get vertical and throw that ball downfield. That is what they do best with Brink and his wide receivers. That is where their strength lies. Three wideouts this time, all to the left side of the field. Gibson to the far side. Dylan slotted inside of Bumpus. Brink will go up for the first time. In trouble, steps up, buys time, throws to Ivory. Ivory's not going to get much, and he's going to be stopped for about a two-yard loss. Well played by A.J. Savannah. Teo Nesheim was coming with the pressure. Brink did a good job of escaping that and getting rid of the ball to his outlet back, but really looks like the Huskies are running around defensively right now, playing with a lot of intensity, and that's what happens early in a rivalry game. You have so much buildup, so much emotion. These guys take the field with their hair on fire, but after about a half a quarter, it gets down to assignment football once again. Four wideouts now, third down and 20. Three-man front shown by the Huskies. They're only coming with a three-man rush. The pitch is to Ivory, and Ivory's grabbed from behind by Taylor Nesson. On the call, I make it hard, not Ivory, on the carry. Well, Jake Locker wasn't on the sideline too long with that neck getting cold. Big kickoff return and then a three and out. So now it'll be Reed Forrest who will roll out before he puts a rugby type kicker. A one hopper, which Forrest handles. This will hit it to 45. Russo pick it up to 30, fumbles the ball, and then controls it as he crosses the 35. It'll be Washington ball. I'll tell you, Reed Forrest punting might not be pretty, but it has been effective. It works. We're coming back. Welcome back. Well, the first two and a half minutes of this football game, P, have been all Washington in every aspect. Well, they really came out firing. The big kickoff return that always gets your team going. Big plays in the special teams. And they came out defensively, forced a penalty, and ran around really well. And now we're going to get a chance to see Locker and Rankin work. Locker will go from under center on first down. And the reverse this time to Reese. Reese to 35 to the 40, trying to get outside. Can't quite do it, but he got about nine. Devin Giles runs him out for Washington State. A reverse on the first play. The Kyocera lineups offensively for the Washington State, or rather for the Washington Huskies. And we already talked about Lewis Rankin. He's already shown you what he can do, going 89 yards with the opening kickoff. And, of course, we will see a lot more of Lewis Rankin. Guy that just seems to be getting better as the season goes on. Two of his last three games, as Petros mentioned, 200 yards plus. Then they go out of the gun. And it gave this to Rankin. And Rankin is stopped almost immediately by Andy Madden. Take a look at the Washington State defense presented by Keo Sarah, Andy Mattingly, who made that stop. Going to be lining up in all kinds of different positions today. They're going to step to a bear defense. It's going to look like an eagle front. Basically, that means there's going to be four down linemen, but they're still running a 3-4 defense. You're going to see Mattingly, who's number 45, walked up on the line of scrimmage. There he is right there. And again, this time is to Kravitz. Kravitz going to be close to the first down. I think he got it. And he did. So the chains will move. Ty Willingham's really liked Luke Kravitz in a short yardage capacity. He's a senior, about 230 pounds, 6'1". That's his 11th carry of the season. He gets his head down and goes forward. You know, he is a senior, and Washington will do that. He's a senior, but he will be back next year because eligibility-wise, he's only a junior. Did that at Stanford too. Uh, exactly. Time, I mean. Exactly. Confusing the broadcast. Yes, it is. Short drop this time. And the pass is complete to Russo. So so far, I mean, the Huskies absolutely doing everything right. Well, they've come out with a pretty good game plan, and they don't seem to be bothered right now by that wrinkle that Bill Doba's defense has thrown at the Huskies. Again, they have the guy walked up on the line of scrimmage, four down lineman, but Locker. Very easily drops back and delivers that ball. Devin Giles eventually pushing Russo out of bounds. So first out at the 41-yard line of the Cougars. Huskies, I'll tell you, they're playing full of confidence. They come off their biggest win, a victory against California. Locker this time straight ahead, carrying for the first time. Puts his head down, runs into linebackers. 
<laughs> I guess the neck's not bothering him. Or Corey Evans. He kind of took the brunt of that from Jake Locker, and that's really the first time we've seen him running that football and, and being physical since he was hit by Al Afalava of Oregon State and Corvallis a few weeks back. He looked pretty strong there. Looks like he's trying to get the ball to Paul Homer, but Homer just takes off, so Locker follows him into the hole and takes on the entire linebacking core of the Cougs. Picked up six on the play, second and four. Quick pass this time to Russo. First down and more, 30, 25. Out of bounds about the 22-yard line. And again, Washington absolutely El Fuego. <laughs> they look like that because they're short passing. They're doing a lot like USC did against Arizona State on Thanksgiving. There they get the ball to Russo. Short passing right in front of Devin Childs once again. Running the ball, misdirection, using rank and using the quarterback. This has been a masterful drive. Usually we see Jake Locker get vertical in the passing game immediately as it happened so far. So first down, they mark it at the 20 yard line. Rankin and Johnson both in the backfield now. And this time it's Locker on the keep. And Locker will get him down about the 18 yard line. Gain of about two. Might give him forward progress to the 17. Greg Trent, middle backer on the stop for Washington State. So far, Jake Locker looks very comfortable in this football game. Doesn't look tired, very poised young man, and he's gonna be that way. You see Patua Toa bearing down on him, but Jake's able to break that tackle and takes it into Trent, who's one of the more physical linebackers in the Pac-10. Almost runs through that tackle. Looking very strong, and Washington State's gonna keep coming. There's a give to Rankin. Rankin gets it over here, and he's got it down about the 12-yard line. It'll be about two yards short of another first down. Incidentally, with that last rush, Locker tied the Pac-10 record for rushing by a quarterback. And he's going to be around for a little longer. Well, if he has a good one and then goes to Hawaii and has a good one running the football, he'll be over 1,000 yards. Lewis Rankin is the first 1,000-yard tailback that Washington has had since 1997, Corey Dillon. So quite a rushing attack, not quite Arkansas yet, but UW is getting there with Locker and his ability to run the football. It's impressive, and, and they like Brandon Johnson, the freshman running back, who's not in the game now, but was a moment ago, and now we've got flags and a stoppage here before the play could get going. Full start, offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, still third down. Chad Macklin, the man who jumped. Let's take a moment to recognize the U.S. Bank Pac-10 Players of the Week from last week, and Lewis Rankin, who we're watching here. Huge win, huge, huge game, I should say, in the win over California, 224 yards. Spencer Larson, who's had a very good year at linebacker for Arizona, 16 tackles and their upset win against Oregon. And Antoine Kaysen, I know how much you like him. Unbelievable performance against Oregon. Kaysen just... Doing it, doing everything. Picking the ball off, very physical corner. He's the Pac-10's best at that position. Locker straight back, backs protect. Locker throws to the end zone, Russo can't hang on. Good job that time defensively by Devin Giles. Well, the Cougs got some help from the penalty there, but they're gonna force a fourth down here. Pretty well-delivered ball, and Russo's a guy with really good hands and runs very good routes. If he would have come up with that one, it would have been pretty spectacular, but Locker put it in a good spot for him, and I'm really impressed with the freshman so far coming off that injury in this football game. No question. Perkins will try a 35-yard field goal to make this a 10 to nothing ball game. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. And just like that, the Huskies have taken a 10 to nothing lead. 8.37 left here in the first quarter. Ah, oh, one of the most memorable Apple Cups that took place back in 1992. Look at the weather, it was snowing, but it didn't defer. Drew Bledsoe hit Philip Bobo with a 44-yard touchdown pass, and it concluded with Bobo sliding all the way into a snowbank and getting an embrace from his teammates. WSU won it, 42 to 23. Lovely day in Coleman. Ah, perfect, they love it. <laughs> There's Locker this time, give to Rankin. Rankin trying to bounce it outside, slips a man, ball's loose. And the Cougs, no, the Huskies, I believe, have it back. Let's see, Cougars ball. And now they, they may be changing it. 
The linesman came in, called it Cougars ball, but now I'm not sure. Huskies will maintain possession. What a mess. Well, you're going to see Rankin here break it outside and watch him get upfield right away. This is what changed in his game over the last few weeks. Mattingly then coming in and forcing the fumble, and there you see everybody going after it. And yes, it looks like Marcel Reese, the wide receiver, is the one that came up with it at the end. And Huskies retain possession. Everything going away of the Huskies so far. They've outplayed the Cougars and they've outlooked the Cougars. Here's Rankin again. And Rankin gets a little gap, gets into Cougar territory at about the 46 yard line. Even the officials didn't know. They signaled every way but to us. <laughs> Mattingly on the stop for the Cougars. But a good pickup on first down. Well, here in the first quarter, you can really say that the Huskies' play has manifested itself in the play of their tailback. Lewis Rankin, they have had more intensity in this football game. They're going full speed ahead, and they are playing with a lot of anger and a lot of violence and a lot of purpose right now. And the Cougs are going to have to match that if they want to stay in here. They're going to have to make a statement. They're playing like they played early in the year when they beat Syracuse. We're ahead of Ohio State at halftime, beat Boise State. Here's Russo inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line, first down, Huskies. That's part of it there. You saw it from Anthony Russo making the move on Wachiku right after he makes the catch and getting a couple extra yards. That's intensity that the Huskies are bringing to this football game. And you see their coach, Ty Willingham, he's getting into it. And you see what they've been doing. Running up a whole bunch of yards. <laughs> they have some weapons offensively. It's just taken a while with a freshman quarterback the one knock on Jake Locker is he's not as accurate as they'd like him to be in the passing game right now at this point. Blitz comes and Rankin runs right into it. Maybe a yard on the play. Kendrick Dunn on the stop. Lewis Rankin, as we said, a senior out of Stockton, California. Been some pretty good players come out of Stockton, California. Out of Lincoln High School. The nephew of Webster Slaughter. Oh, he used to have cool hair. Good wideout. First thousand yard rusher at Washington since 1997. Five wide receivers, an empty backfield here on second down and eight. Locker, quick toss this time. And it hit Curtis Shaw in the hands. Shaw could not hold on. And that's a shock because Shaw is a guy that they moved to wide receiver. They will be very thin at the wide receiver position after this year. Most of the guys are seniors. Shaw's a converted back, and he runs that hitch route very well. And you see Willingham going to talk to him, trying to calm the young receiver down. Came out of the same high school as Lewis Rankin out of Lincoln High School in Stockton. Locker once more. Steps up, looks to the end zone. Got a man out there, but he overthrew his intended receiver who was Marcel Reese. And we were saying, I mean, Locker still is, to some degree, a work in progress, and that is something that they would like to work on. I'd like him to be more effective on the deep routes. He has a little trouble throwing it, and I think a lot of it is because of his intensity as a football player. You know, he's so involved in the game. A lot of quarterbacks just kind of sit back, and they're gonna go with some confidence here, and he's gonna go for it on fourth down. A lot of quarterbacks can sit back and relax in that pocket and really throw the deep ball with touch. Jake, you know, he can take off and run and take on linebackers. It's kind of hard for him to play both sides of that. Now they struggle in fourth down situations, as you just saw. Homer in the backfield. Locker rolls to his right. Now he's got room. He could have run that ball, but instead he threw his closer toward Russo, and it'll be incomplete. The Cougars will take over. It looked like Locker had a lot of field that time. It looked like it, and you have to wonder about the neck injury and what they've told Jake Locker. Normally, I believe earlier in the season, Jake Locker would have taken off with this football and gotten the first down. He gets a nice cut block outside from Homer on the linebacker. And it really did look to me like Locker could have taken off and run that ball. He had to be throwing it away. I'm not really sure what he was thinking there. But a nice stop by the Coop. Yeah, it was. And let's see if that lifts them a little bit. 423 left first quarter. Huskies jumping in and out of blitz. And Alex Brent changing the play. He's very good at that incident. Give them a call. The call, right side, nothing doing. Great play from behind. From the back side, Reffitt with a really nice play. Jordan Reffitt, big guy, 295 pounds out of Moses Lake, Washington. 
Watch him come over the top here and make that play. Washington stayed a lot of trouble on offense. Seven plays and only eight yards. So it'll be second down and 10. And the pass almost intercepted. That was danger all the way. Nate Williams got a hand on it. If he didn't, somebody else would have. The first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Live better with Overstock.com because, well, we've been telling you all year. It's right? all about the O. It is, it is all about the O. Especially around the holidays. Oh. <laughs> Third down and ten. Three-man rush. They drop in the coverage. Rick steps up, throws deep. Got Gibson out there, and it's a little underthrown. And a nice job defensively by Roy Lewis. That's a ball I would think Brink wishes he had back. Well, I'll tell you what. The Cougs are coming out. And they're trying to run their offense. Brink's changing plays, and they're dropping back and throwing the football. He's been under a little pressure, but he got rid of this one fine. But it just looks right now like Washington is a step faster and they're a step more intense right now than Washington State. They've really brought it to this football game thus far. A punt this time, and Russo's gonna have room. 30, 35, 40, you can see this one coming. Midfield, great block, 35 out of bounds at about the 29 yard line. And a flag down at the 46. That'll bring it back. Mason Foster gave him a key block, but it's all for naught. Well, when you roll out to the right and punt it, you expect that ball to go right. This ball goes the opposite direction. It's a nightmare for the special teams for Washington State. And Russo does the exact right thing and takes off in the other direction. Finally gets knocked out of bounds, but it's coming back. Block in the back, I'm quite certain, will be the call here. During the run back, illegal block in the back above the waist. Number 40 of the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, the crowd, needless to say, does not like it. That was a 39 yard punt and a 47 yard return, but it's not gonna be all that bad for Washington State. There it there. is right there on the yeah. left side of your screen. Didn't really have a lot to do with the play Nothing either. Nothing to do it? with the play, really catching a break are the Cougs there because the rugby punt is supposed to stay to the side you roll to. If it goes the opposite direction, it's almost going to be a touchdown every time. So the dogs will start at the 44-yard line. There's a reverse this time to Shaw, and Shaw will get it across the 45, about the 48, and another flag is down. We saw that graphic a moment ago, Washington, the least penalized team in the Pac-10. Let's see what this flag is. Jack Wood is our referee. You saw how Ty Willingham got Shaw the ball. Of Illegal motion, offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. So back to back penalties uh, against Ty Willingham's Huskies. And that's really gonna anger Ty. This late in the season, not being able to line up offensively, even though your quarterback's a freshman, not excusable, especially in the Apple Cup. Three penalties for 20 yards against the Washington Huskies. First and 15 now. Short drop for Locker, throws, batted down, almost picked. That was Mattingly who got a hand on that ball. Take a moment to look at uh, our American Airlines VCS <laughs> top 10. Well, we all know LSU losing a thriller yesterday. Great football game to Arkansas. Kansas and Missouri having at one another this evening. West Virginia, they beat Connecticut today. They'll move up. And you have to think the winner of Missouri and Kansas, and they'll be 1-2. Well, they got to take on the Big 12 champion from the South, and that'll be Oklahoma. That's a tough game to get through. West Virginia, Ohio State, or the team for the Big 12. I think that's what you're looking at right now. Locker in trouble, sidesteps a tackle. Gets the 40 and gets to about the 43 yard line. To get back close to the original line of scrimmage. Hussein Abdullah makes the stop for the Cougs. Tomorrow the BCS ratings show. You're gonna be on that, right? Yeah, 
I'll, I'll be back <laughs> He's in not town excited. for that. Well, it's just so difficult, Barry. It's so difficult to, to figure out all these tiebreakers and who's what and where the voters are going to go. And this is the type of year that makes a prognosticator cry in the fetal position in the corner. I, I'm so embarrassed because nothing ever happens the way you think it's going to happen no. this year in college football. Very tough. It's been great for college football. Tough on the prognosticators. You mean to tell me you didn't have Kansas all the way? Right? <laughs> no. There's Locker bouncing it outside in trouble. <laughs> Again, he gets away from the first man, throws. Intercepted, but out of bounds. Locker still oh, having a little trouble with throwing the football. It looks that way, but you're starting to see what he can bring to the table. He just got such amazing feet. I'm not sure the weapons around him are really up to his level right now. Some good players, and Rankin is a very good player, but he never really has been on the same page with his receiving core this year. And you see he's been running sideline to sideline. Looks a little tired right now. and Hard to think that Jake's not a little worn out from the whole season. High twisting kick. Bumpus is going to let this bounce, and it will skip into the end zone. The Cougs start at the 20-yard line, 57-yard punt, although I'm sure would have preferred to make it about 50. Let's go to the sideline once more, Jim Watson. Waddy, what do you got? Well, Barry, as you guys know, the state of Washington, world famous for its apples, and now grower Randy Valakoff has divided the state right through its core. Valakoff has grown a batch of apples with each school's logo displayed in the skin. All he does is put stickers on it as the fruit matures and so it never turns red. The cost of loyalty a little high, guys. $6 each, oh, but a small price for the sweet taste of victory. A mere bag of shells. <laughs> Bump us on the reception this time. A pickup of about six. Roy Lewis makes the tackle. Only the third, the third completion for Alex Brink. Both quarterbacks have struggled throwing the football so far. Well, the Cougs right now are almost in emergency mode offensively because they've just been beaten physically and emotionally so far in the first quarter of this Apple Cup football game. They're going to have to calm everything down, get some plays for five, six yards, just like that one to bump this, and kind of inch their way down the field. Play fake this time. Now Brink will roll left, steps up, throws for Gibson. He's got it into Washington territory at the 41-yard line. In front of Byron Davenport, a pickup of 33, and suddenly the Cougs are in business. Just like I said, inch your way down the field. Here you're going to see <laughs> Gibson working on Davenport. He is a very good receiver, perfectly catches the ball with his hands, makes sure he has possession. This is how you do it right there, kids. You catch that ball with your hands. Don't use your chest, your face, your Adam's apple, or your neck. Use your hands. Great catch by Gibson. Nice throw, too. Frank straight back. Throws over the middle. Wide open. This time, Frischnet. Frischnet's gone. Touchdown, Cougars. How about that? 74 yards in two plays. Like I said once again, Barry, inch your way down the football field and remain calm. All is well. That's why you're an analyst. <laughs> it's been that kind of year. The Cougs just ripping off giant chunks. Two plays. Brink gets the seam to Frischneck. Frischneck has become an offensive juggernaut since the Cal game. And there you see Brink's reaction. Frischneck, very physical guy. A junior, Ephraim, Utah, 6'3", 251. Look good catching that ball. Abdul Mohammed to try to add the seventh point for the Washington State Cougars, which he does do. And with a minute and four seconds, we got a football game suddenly breaking out in Seattle. 10-7 dogs. We welcome you back, 10 to seven ball game. Interesting numbers offensively for Washington State, B. Like I said, inching their way. First nine plays, eight yards. The last three plays, 80 yards for the Cougs. This is the short man, Homer. Gets the head down, the shoulders pointed in the right direction. Gets it up across the 40 to about the 44, over the 45 yard line. 20 yard return off a short kick. And the Huskies will be in business. So Locker will start at his own 45-yard line. As the Cougars struck quickly, and that, that is, that's what they do. They get vertical in a hurry. It looks so much like Washington was just out physicaling them and beating them up offensively, but things turned around in a hurry for the Cougs offense. There's a pitch to Rankin. Rankin tried to cut it back, and they closed it down very quickly, did the Cougars. A pickup of about three. Patoa Tua and Trent on the stop 
for the Washington State Cougars. Looked like there was going to be something there. Shut it down quickly. Still a very good run, though, by Lewis Rankin. I, and I'll tell you what, that's what he's going to have to do on the next level if he wants to have a chance here. The man is very fast. He's got some nifty moves, but if he get those legs going vertically and gets his head down, he's going to gain yardage just because of the momentum. Second down. Rankin again tries the right side. And he'll pick up about four more. He'll be about a yard short of the first down. Lance Broadus, defensive end for the Cougars, makes the stop. And it'll be third down and one. And with that, we reach the end of the first period. And a look at the scoreboard shows the Washington Huskies 10. They bounced out very quickly after the 89-yard opening kick return by Lewis Rankin. Added a 35-yard field goal. Cougars coming right back with a touchdown. It's 10 to 7. Second quarter coming up. We welcome you back. We start the second quarter with the Washington Huskies leading the Washington State Cougars by a 10 to 7 score and a very entertaining first quarter as we expected it might be. Well, with neither of these teams going to bowl game. Best you can hope for is a shootout, a lot of emotion, and a lot of glory in the Apple Cup. Look at the numbers. Only two yards rushing for Washington State. We said they had to establish that. Shows you what we know. Locker out of the gun once more. He'll keep it himself, and he'll get across the 45, about the 44, to a two. A first man to him. It'll be enough for a Washington State, or rather Washington first down. Well, Jake Locker still has the raw speed to take into that Coop defense. Hadn't been very accurate with the pass in this football game. They came out throwing the ball short. They were very good doing that, but when he started trying to get a little more vertical, suffers from the same problems he has all season, just not very accurate with those throws. Three of nine right now for 35 yards. For Locker, play fake, he'll go up again. In trouble, unloads it, and catch is made. Tough catch by Michael Gottlieb of the tight end. Pass was thrown to the opposite side. Gottlieb reached back and snagged it. That's one of the things that's really been lacking this season for UW is they have not really gotten the tight end involved offensively. Nice catch that time by Gottlieb. Looks like he came up with it. The Washington State fans in the end zone don't think so, but looked like a pretty good catch to me. There's any question about it. Of course, can review this, but they will not. Every play is with you. That's right. <laughs> for better or worse. Second down and three. They give to Rankin. Rankin gets close to the 35-yard line. He's going to be stopped short of the first down by Alfonso Jackson. And it'll be third and one. Bill Doba obviously feeling a little bit better about the way things are going. Well, his teams always seem relaxed. They always play loose, and even if they come off a bad loss, you always expect the Bill Doba team to come back and compete hard the next week. There is no give up or quit in his team. There's Kravitz once again, the big back, and he's got the first down, short of the 30-yard line. Again, it's Jackson on the stop, but Kravitz a load at 6'1", 225. Here's Kravitz running the short yardage. Got that ball in one arm, too. A lot of the time, you see him give the ball to the fullback, and they never take it out of the cradle position. But a lot of confidence by Luke Kravitz, just carrying it in one arm. Like Gale Sayers. <laughs> something, something like Gale Sayers. First down, just short of the 30-yard line. Quick toss this time to Reese. And Reese slips a tackle, gets it down about the 23-yard line, pick up a seven. Watch a coup, made the tackle, but a good job by Reese. Well, you look at Marcel Reese, El Camino Junior College, and he's a big guy, 240 pounds. He's much bigger than Rankin, the starting tailback. Nice block from Russo, and Reese is kind of like a tailback when he takes off with that ball. Big boy, 240 pounds. 35 receptions coming into the game. He's been very productive this year for the Huskies. Second down at three, 
And it's Locker this time on the keeper to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Forget about it. Touchdown, Huskies. He, he is deceptively quick. It is unbelievable his raw speed and his ability to jump outside. I remember watching him play against Syracuse early in the year, and I just couldn't believe the, the way he jumps outside like that and just races everybody, beats corners, beats everybody to that pylon. He didn't even have to dive. An unbelievable talent is Jake Locker, especially when running the football. He and, has no fear. And, you know, you and I, we get around to every team in the Pac-10 Conference, and there was not a coach that has not said that this guy is going to be something special. We're coming back. Welcome to the locker room, and it is just that right now as Jake Locker takes it into the end zone for a Washington touchdown, and, Pete, that was a thing of beauty. Well, his ability just to get outside and draw safeties up, I mean, he's such a such a person to account for. It's one thing to watch Dennis Dixon run around, and he was having a Heisman season, but he's a guy that didn't take a lot of hits. Locker is very different in that he's a guy that delivers a blow, but also has the speed to get to the outside. I'm not sure he's not faster than Dixon. It's really deceptive speed. I mean, you look at the guy, maybe it's just that he's such a big guy. But you just, I didn't think he was going to get the corner that time, and he ran right by. The safety was coming up. This is Ivory on the return, or at least, uh, it was Ivory on the return, and Ivory's going to be stopped at about the 22-yard line. Let's look back on that last touchdown run. Well, here's what we're talking about. Watch the safeties and everybody start to come up as Locker approaches the line of scrimmage. Then he's just going to take off. Watch how quickly he gets to that corner. I mean, it's unbelievable to think that that is actually a 240-pound quarterback running the football. And the guy he's compared to very often is the guy who might be winning the Heisman Trophy this year, Tim Tebow from Florida. But I'll tell you one thing about Jake Locker. He is much faster than Tebow. This is a guy that can flat out sprint with the football. So now it's up to the Cougars to try to answer Ivory, trying to box it outside, is going to lose about three yards. And the Cougars continue to go backwards when they try to run the football. Roy Lewis, first man to him, got help from Teo Nessheim. They're definitely not getting it done right now on the line of scrimmage. You look at the penetration by the Huskies, and Ivory not helping his teammates out at all, trying to get to that sideline. That is not going to get it done in this football game. Run into the sideline and try to create a big play. Washington State in the run game just needs to stay alive and get at least three yards a pop, and that's that. So they can then go vertical with the football. Five rushes for no yards for the Cougars so far. Brink in trouble, down he goes. That's what happens when you can't run the ball. Reffin is the first man to it. Well, the Huskies able just to pin their ears back and go after Brink here. They just bring a four-man rush, and I'm not sure Brink just doesn't fall down, and he, he does. He yeah. tripped over his own two feet. Didn't even run into one of his guards or, or blockers or, or the back there. He just kind of tripped on his own legs, and then Reffin got to him. He'll be credited with the sack. Good for him. So now it'll be third down and 19 for the Cougars. Four-man rush. Brink steps up. I buy some time, he throws, and it's caught for a first down. Great grab that time by Charles Dillon. And a pickup of 23, a huge play at this juncture for Washington State. Well, that time Reffitt really did get to the feet of Brink, but Brink is pretty nifty, and a lot of people don't recognize that about his game. Watch how he's able to push up in the pocket. Reffitt gets a hand on his leg, but then Brink, who throws pretty well on the run, is able to drop that right between the two defenders into the hands of Charles Dillon, who's a very good receiver in his own right. We talk a lot about Bumpus and Gibson. Dillon's just as good as those two. And that's a tough throw to make. He had a throw across his body on the run. Now we're going to stop it here. We'll see what this is all about. There is no flag down. Timeout, Washington State. Well, Washington Their State, I think that timeout was called timeout of the half. by the bench. This will be a 30-second correction. We'll you take a time out. Media timeout. 
Cougar fans, FSN and WSU have teamed up to give you more of your favorite teams online with Cougars All Access on WSUCougars.com. With live games, highlights, interviews, and video you can't find anywhere else. No matter what Cougar sport you love, Cougars All Access gives you a new way to be a Cougar fan. Get your All Access Pass by logging on to WSUCougars.com today. Brought to you in part by Sterling Savings Bank, the perfect fit bank. FSN, home of the Washington State Cougars. All right, thanks a lot, Goldie. Or can the Trojans help the Bruins win a Pac-10 title? Well, UCLA beats USC. Arizona State loses to U of A. And UCLA's going to the Rose Bowl. Rock are going for it all. That throws everybody. Let's take a look at uh, what's down the road in the Pac-10. USC and UCLA, of course, in that great rivalry game, as is uh, the border war between Arizona and Arizona State. Oregon will play at Oregon State. And I, that could be a very tough game, too. Or at, that game is at Oregon, not at Oregon State. Oregon's very different football team without their quarterback, Dennis Dixon. And Bellotti has really allowed his injury to deflate that team. They just did not look the same in the Rose Bowl this afternoon. Not at all. Going to swing to Rankin this time. And Rankin will get it across the 35. Only gain of about three, maybe four yards. Could have done on the tackle. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up 70% on brand name products. Live better with Overstock.com. We've been telling you this all year. And it's all about the O. Figure it out. Third down now, a long six. Trips right formation. Locker straight back. Look out. Hit as he throws, and he overthrows Russo, who was open, but Locker had to unload that ball. Kendrick Dunn has been coming free for most of this second quarter, and that time comes free and puts a hit on Locker. Locker just very inaccurate, often overthrowing guys, better than underthrowing them, but often overthrowing guys when it comes to the deep passing game. And that is the real part of his game we always talk about that he has got to work on. And I'm sure he will. He has so many other tools. Yeah, and it's not for a lack of arm strength. Twisting kick that Bumpus will handle at the 22. Slips the first man, flag is down. And Bumpus is back. All the way to about the 12-yard line. May not be a flag. They made a few marking where he caught that ball. Grayson Gunheim down under that punt. 42-yard punt, minus eight on the return. So it continues to go all the way on the Huskies. Let's go to the sideline. Jim Watson's got a special guest. Waddy? Barry, as you might imagine, legends littering both sidelines. Washington State former quarterback, the throne, Simone, Jack Thompson. Why is this game so special? You played, what, three of them? I played three of them. It wasn't too special for me. I, I had uh, nothing but bad memories here. Give me your best memory personally from the Apple Cup. Well, I was, uh, I was on the sidelines watching the, uh, the Huskies. It was 1975 come back and beat us. In, it was the last it was two minutes uh, remaining of the game. We had the game won. I wasn't playing, but uh, I was on the sidelines with Mike Levenstall uh, conspiring to leave Washington State. We were going to go down to San Diego State University because we were, we were sitting on the sidelines on the bench, so we were going to change the schools. Jack, you know, Alex Brink has taken a lot of heat. I think he's a special quarterback, 10,000 yards, 71 touchdowns. Definitely probably the smartest quarterback ever to play uh, at, at Washington State, but uh, it's been really tough. He's, he's really put it on the line all, all four years here. and. Uh, you know, let's hope he can uh, win tonight because he, he would have won three out of four. Barry, the uh, family legacy continues in the Pac-10, of Ooh. course. Uh, Jack's nephew, as that ball is deflected and caught. What a huge play. This is Kevin McCall with the football at the 40, at the 35. Sometimes you just got to have a little luck. Jack Thompson had some of that, didn't he, Waddy? Uh, yeah, I, th I think it was Jack. He just, you know, he rubbed it, and the genie came out of the lamp all of a sudden. Hey, Barry, I was asking about his Alpha Cup experiences, and he told me, hey, my favorite memory was doing the Pac-10 preview with Barry Tompkins. Ooh, I knew there was a reason I liked that guy. Well, you see that ball's going to go flying in the air because of the big hit, and it was pretty high up there in the air, and McCall, the backup tailback. Carson, California, a redshirt senior, has been around a long time, finally getting some luck, and he knows what to do with it. Takes off down the sideline and shows some speed. 
end result is a 47-yard play and a first down at the 33-yard line. And this time a little bit of room on the ground as Christopher Ivory gets it down to the 25-yard line, Waddy. Well, Barry, the, the, the tag I had for that whole story, Jack Thompson, the family legacy continues in the Pac-10 because his nephew is Tavita Pritchard, the starting quarterback at Stanford, who, of course, engineered that upset over USC earlier. And he asked me when he first came out here, hey, did you get a, a final on Stanford-Notre Dame? Do you guys have one I can pass along? Yeah, we sure do. I don't think he's going to want to hear it, though. <laughs> Let's keep it to ourselves, then. <laughs> Notre Dame won it by six, Ronnie. You can tell me. Thank you. Play fake this time. Brink going to step up, throw the ball, look to the end zone, going for Gibson. He's got it, but was he in bounds? No. Might have been forced out there. Byron Davenport on the coverage there. But Gibson had some separation, and no, he was carrying himself out of bounds. Great body control by Gibson, but just not enough to get a foot down there. And a nice throw by Brink. There's nowhere else he could have put that football. Washington State offense, very streaky. They can rip off yards in a hurry, that time with a little luck with the tip ball that fell in the hands of McCall, but they look pretty confident right now. No, they do. They gotta worry about a first down here now. It's third down, about a yard and a half. And a pitch this time to Ivory, and Ivory's gonna get the first down and more. He's got a beat on the end zone, 10-5. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. some success on the ground and Ivory's going to make a decision right there to get by Harris instead of turning it up and just making sure he got the first down he went for the home run ball and he got it showing some speed getting to the edge before Darren Harris and finally Bespin Forrester is there to knock him out of bounds but not before Ivory takes it to the house and that's a big shot in the arm for Wazoo to get something positive going in the run game that very positive big touchdown run by Ivory. no question about it took it in from 25 yards out we got a ball game here 17 to 13 the point after coming and they're going to take another look at this to make sure that ivory did in fact get into the end zone i believe that he did I'm sure we'll get an opportunity to look at it during this booth review world financial group asks have you reviewed your finances lately world financial group helping you move from dreaming to doing you do. You're a doer. I also dream. Two I fears off. Two for two. Now you're going to see Ivory at the very end of that run does a good job of being physical and taking the hit and getting his body back going. Looks to me like his body was pretty much over everything before. It's the first thing to hit the ground is that foot right there. And his body is, is well over the pylon at that point. Yeah, I don't believe they'll reverse this call that right foot is the first thing to go down on the ground and that's two or three yards past the pylon and it's all about the ball did the ball go past the pylon and i believe it did after review the ruling on the field stands touchdown which draws a cheer from the washington state minions who are all gathered in the end zone to our left it really bodes well for the future to have a guy like Chris Ivory running with some confidence. The one thing Washington State has lacked over the last couple of years with the graduation of Jerome Harrison, who was just a great back, is that kind of back that can get you 150, 200 yards in a game and really take over. Of course, Dwight Tardy had been the starter most of the season. He got hurt in a brilliant game. And in fact, he got hurt on a touchdown run that sealed the victory against UCLA. He's gone for the year. Ivory actually was a high school fullback playing tailback here. Three-point game. We'll be back. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage on FSN. Now we're going to flag. I believe that's going to be on Shaw. Curtis Shaw has just had a very difficult apple cut. Dead ball, full start. Offense, number 14. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Sixth penalty of the first half for Ty Willingham's Huskies. I think that's two penalties on Curtis Shaw and the two drops. Freshman having a tough apple cut to begin with. Certain Washington State will come after this. And 
they do come after it, they don't get anywhere near it. A wobbly kick off the side of the foot bump is just going to let it bounce. And it will go dead somewhere inside the 25-yard line at about the 22. And that will be the last play of the first half. And a really entertaining game. First half, and it's just typical of this game. The Apple Cup always seems to be this way. It has been a lot of fun, and performers are performing. Brink looks pretty good. We've seen some great plays from Locker, running the football especially, and Frischneck has been the story, the tight end for Washington State with the two touchdowns and a few big catches. <laughs> Welcome back to Husky Stadium here in Seattle, the 100th renewal of the Apple Cup. We prepare to start the third quarter, 21-20 ball game, Washington State over Washington. My name is Barry, that guy right there, his name is Petros. And P, you got to give it up, I think, for Washington State. I mean, they were down 10 love before they had their shoes laced. Early in this football game, the Huskies came out here with a lot of anger. They had the big kickoff return by Rankin. They were playing very ferocious defensively, and things very slowly turned around. Washington State kind of took over the momentum of this football Football game and rivalry games really do have those kind of emotional momentum swings. Washington's been running the ball very well with Rankin and Locker, but Washington State's been keeping them honest with the run, and Brink has just done a fabulous job throwing the football. You see zero turnovers from either team. There's been some penalties, but it's been a fun game so far, and it should be a great second half. We prepare to start the second half, and Washington State will get it first, but before we get to the kickoff, we'll take it out of the sideline once more. Here's Jim Watson, Waddy. Barry, I hate to do this, but I agree with Petros talking about the emotion of a rivalry game because Ty Willingham just told me the exact same thing. He said they were sky high at the beginning, and then they had a letdown. I asked him what happened with the offense. He had such great rhythm early. He told me three things, penalties, drops, and mental mistakes, and he said that's what they talked about most of the half. Defensively, I said, hey, Brink's heating up his last two drives. He looked terrific, 14-19, 222, a couple of touchdowns. I said, Will you bring more pressure? And he said, absolutely. Well, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I think he's right on, of course, and uh, that's probably why he's the coach. And we just sit here and talk about it. Bill Dobo, on the other hand, got to be very pleased with uh, what he saw at the end of the first half. I think defensively stepped up, and certainly you can't question what the Cougs did offensively. Well, after throwing six picks last week versus Oregon State at home, Brink has really turned it around. He's played fantastic, especially in the second quarter. He's found Frischneck for a couple of scores. And Washington State really has it together offensively, taking up big chunks of yardage and throwing that football downfield. And they're doing just enough with the run game to keep the Huskies honest defensively. And here is the kickoff to start the second half. It's going to be Dillon at the six yard line. Going to the return kickoff. The 20 got a gap to the 30 yard line and stopped as he crossed the 30 to about the 32 yard line. Nate Williams makes the tackle. Let's take a look at the Keo Sarah. Wireless call of the game, and it was this guy right here, Frischneck. Frischneck, Frischneck, the junior tight end, getting a start for Jed Collins, finding the corner and finding the end zone. Nice throw from Brink, and the tight end very involved in this football game thus far, and if Frischneck leads him to victory in this football game, they're going to build a statue of the young man in downtown Pullman. <laughs> Not to mention he's from Utah. It's a basketball player, all-state basketball player. You can see his athleticism in this football game. Quick toss from Brink and a catch, and Dylan will uh, get it going ahead for about six, maybe seven yards on the play. And that's what we talked to you about just before we went away to halftime. Nine plays, eight yards on the first three drives the Cougs had on their last four. They had 24 plays, 256 yards, and three touchdowns. Big chunks, doing a great job protecting Brink, and, and they can really get vertical in a hurry, and that's always been the Washington State offense for as long as I can remember. And a fumble, ball loose, and Brink got on it. Good job by Brink just to keep his head about him, wrap the ball up, live to play another day. We talk about the poise of Alex Brink, and this is what a senior quarterback does for you. Some guys might have tried to pick that ball up and, and continue with the play or throw it or make a play. 
Brink does a great job of throwing it away when he has to, getting out of bounds when he has to, and falling on the ball when he has to. Third down now and seven. Brink straight back, short drop, throws, incomplete, off the fingertips of Gibson, who was well covered by Roy Lewis. So the Cougs go three and out on their first possession of the second half. Not a bad throw. Gibson had a chance at that, but he was covered by Roy Lewis. Roy Lewis at of Narbonne, California, 187-pound senior, probably the best player in the secondary for UW. He's been very solid all year for them in a year where the secondary has not played particularly well. Here's Reed Forrest, runs away from the pressure. Russo handles the line drive to 25, right back up the gut to the 35. Stopped at about the 37-yard line by Ryan Kensock. Take a look at our Keystone Light. Always oh, sweet moment of the game was the opening kickoff. And Lewis Rankin. When he goes up and down, Barry, look at him. When he gets vertical, there's no stopping a guy like that. Very, very fast, not too heavy, only 205 pounds. And that was an electric way to start an electric ball game. And he's been just that. 89 yards, our Keystone Light. Smooth moment of the game. Rankin lines up in the backfield now along with Homer. Locker out of the gun. And this is going to be Rankin. And he's got no place to go. He is wrapped up for a loss of about two. Cougars defense has settled down nicely also. Kendrick Dunn. It's been all the linebackers. Dunn, Mattingly, Trent, Evans, all have been involved. Well, Aaron Johnson, one of their stalwarts on the down line is out. They really expect a lot from those linebackers, and they're really bringing it today. You want Lewis Rankin running sideline to sideline. That is not his strength. Even though he's very fast, he is much better when he is going straight downhill up the field. Second down and 12. This time Rankin in motion out of the backfield. Locker straight back. Throws underneath. Catch is made by Williams. Be a gain of about six for the 41-yard line. Make it DeAndre Goodwin on the catch. Goodwin, a redshirt freshman, we did not see in the first half. And he might be replacing Curtis Shaw, who had a couple drops and a couple penalties in the first half. The freshman at Stockton, California, guy they really like, but has not played well in this football game. So Goodwin's in and just made a play. Third down and six now for the Huskies. Ball just across the 41-yard line. Five of 11. Third down conversions for Washington so far. Ranking on the backfield with Locker. Straight back has all day to throw it. Throws underneath. First down to Reese. Reese at midfield 45 and out of bounds. Nothing fancy, but very effective. Well, the drive routes have worked pretty good in this series for Washington, bringing people across the field and trying to get the Cougs linebackers to run with them. You're going to see Reese take off across the field about seven yards deep. Gets a nice block from Anthony Russo coming back, hitting Mattingly. And those drive routes are working so far. First down at the 42-yard line of the Cougars. Pitch this time to Rankin. Rankin cuts it back. And got about three inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. With the convenience of shopping at home, you can save up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com because uh, it's all about the O. That's what you. Not a lot of called run plays for Jake Locker in this football game at all. No, he's put it up 24 times, much more than the norm for him. Here's a give to Rankin. Rankin will get it down close to the 35 yard line. It'll be third down at about three. And I know they want to protect their freshman quarterback, and it was very tough to see him stretchered off the field against Oregon State, but they're going to have to utilize that part of Jake Locker's game and call some plays for him to run the football if they want to be in this game. The Cougs are not going to stop offensively. The Huskies have got to start producing, and it's got to come from that man, Jake Locker. It's not going to come from anywhere else. Empty backfield now, so five receivers. Locker unloads quickly and throws a little wide that time intended for DeAndre Goodwin. That was a tough ball to handle for Goodwin. 
So it'll be fourth down at the 35 yard line decision time for Ty Willingham. They're going to go. Yeah, no hesitation for Ty. Fourth down, they need a little less than three. You can see they're 0 for their last six in fourth down attempts. Walker with Rankin in the backfield. Walker straight back to pass. Now he rolls away and is dragged down, dropped for a loss. Great play by Greg Trent. Really well defended, I thought, by the Cougars. The two of toe was also there. And the Cougars will take over. To a toe and Trent getting in the backfield in a hurry. Walker really looking to throw the ball, not looking to run. Finally decides to take off. But Trent with the very sure ankle tackle taken on the block from Rankin. Not a great effort by Rankin to protect his quarterback. And Trent doing a good job getting to the feet of Locker and knocking him over. Nice series. Cooks take over at the 43-yard line. Bumpus starts in motion. Bumpus is very quiet in this game. Give to Ivory. Bounce it outside with the roof. 45 midfield. 45. And into Washington territory inside the 40-yard line of the 39. Gain of 18. And suddenly, things that weren't working early are working now. Well, Bespin Forrester missed the tackle. But you're going to see these edges have been very open for this Washington State team, Ivory's just going to come right there on that edge. Watch everybody get pinned down. Number seven, Gunheim's going to come in too far. And a nice block by the H-back. And Ivory just getting to that edge in a hurry. And that edge has been there for most of the second quarter. Now into the third. First down at the 39-yard line. And Brick checking off. And now flag. And a procedure call against the Washington State Cougars. Somebody moved. Dead ball. Fall start. Offense. Number 69. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Bill Koba. I'm woofing at his player. What are you doing? That one's on Kenny Alfred. The sophomore. At a gig harbor, Washington. Wonderful place. And those are the type of penalties that have really stalled both teams in this football game. Just little ones that set it back. Only the third penalty, though, for the Cougars. Here's Brink off the play fake through behind Buckus, but Buckus will get something out of it to about the 41-yard line. He'll get about three well short of the first down. Byron Davenport on the tackle. Going to bring about a second down and 12. But you see how much just a very small penalty like that. Five yards is all it is, but it sets off the entire rhythm of the playbook, the offense, everything you're trying to get done is based on getting those 10 yards. Second down and 12, brings straight back again. Throws a screen to Ivory, nothing to do it. Well defended by E.J. Savannah, was not fooled for a moment. E.J. Savannah, you know he's feeling this game out of Bellevue, Washington. He's been in the thick of this rivalry his whole life. He's a junior and he leads this team in tackles. An incredible 92 tackles coming into this game. 10 TFLs, interception, a couple of recovered fumbles, a very active linebacker in the Sam position for UW. Now it's third down and 15. They need about 15 yards to be a field goal. Brink throws, and a catch is made, and a great grab that time by Gibson. And a first down at the 28-yard line. What a play by Gibson. He knew where the sticks were, made a great catch, and kept the foot down. Well, he's one of those guys that has helped fill the shoes of Jason Hill, and he's done it in a big way. We talked about his body control. You see him get the toes down. Looked like he had both feet down. That would have been a catch in the NFL. There's one. There's two. That is a beautiful catch and a great throw by Alex Brink. We have seen some really precise football between Gibson and Brink in this game. Just a heck of a play right there by Gibson. And a first down on a third and 15. And they are going to look at this again, but I think you saw in that replay, there's, there could be no doubt about this one. 
to take another look at it here. Not only one foot down, both feet down and possession. Well delivered ball right in front of Roy Lewis, the best corner Washington has. And running a very nice comeback, coming right out of that route is Gibson. And then positioning his body perfectly to make the circus catch. And that's exactly what that was. That's a circus catch. That is a big time play. Now, let's make sure the hand was underneath when he lands. Remember, we had the same calls. As a matter of fact, against this same receiver that went against the Washington State Cougars in the game against Arizona State at Pullman that we had earlier this year. I think you're right, Barry. There could be no doubt about that play. That is a completion of the first down for the Cougs. And you were talking about Gibson playing at the next level. We've seen him do a lot of different things this year for the Cougs, playing After hurt, review, making big plays. the ruling on the field stands. So a gain of 16 and a first down for the Washington State Cougars at the 28-yard line of Washington. Over 2,000 yards now in his Washington State career. Gibson's got good size. He's 6'1", just over 200 pounds. He wants to teach history in Washington State. Might be a part of history. <laughs> Brink straight back, looking to the end zone. Got a man open, wide open, and a touchdown to Jeffrey Anderson. Anderson, the state record holder in California in the intermediate hurdles. Pulls down a touchdown catch, and boy, did he put some separation between himself and the Cougar corner. Now one of the, top, the Husky corner, sorry. Top hurdlers in the nation, Barry. You're talking about him. This is a guy that can flat out run. Watch him take off and a well-delivered ball by Brink, and he just eats up the ground in front of Davenport. What a fantastic job, and what a great play call by Mike Levenseller, just to know when to go after the jugular of the Huskies' defense. Jeshua Anderson, a freshman with tremendous promise, like you said, out of Mission Hills, California. He's an Olympian, and they really believe that something special is coming with this kid playing wide receiver. Looks like he pulls it down to me. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that one. There's no doubt about that. I'm more certain about this one than I was the last one. <laughs> well, there's two feet, there's possession. Ball never hit the ground. Uh, and he had the ball against his body. It might have moved a little bit on him when he goes down on the ground, but I, I don't see them, I don't see them reversing this one. But stranger things have happened. Yes, they have. But that in uh, the unanimous opinion up here in the booth is a touchdown. Well, you got an Olympian out there. Are you going to go against the kid that's an Olympian? Exactly. There is some talk that he may uh, try to make the United States Olympic team for this coming Olympics in Beijing and uh, would make it, make it difficult for him to play football next year. But he is a true freshman, has not utilized a redshirt year. And, you know, there's a lot of track guys, and I played football with, with some track guys that they were track guys that you After know, football review, was secondary. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. But Jeshua Anderson, as our thoughts are confirmed with the touchdown. Jeshua Anderson, according to his coach Bill Doba, is a track guy that's very good at football, or better said, a football guy that's really good at track. So he's, he's, he's a natural football player, and that was evidenced by that routed cap. Yeah, he's going to make a lot of noise before he's all done dancing at Washington State. And how about Alex Brink? He started two for five, six yards on his first two completions. Now he's 19-25, 272 yards, and three touchdowns. Playing with a chip on his shoulder tonight. Abdul Mohammed's try for point is up and good, and a look at the scoreboard with 9-11 remaining to be played in the third quarter. The Cougs 28, the Huskies 20. 8-14 remaining in the third quarter. First turnover of the ball game turned in by that man Andy Mattingly and that is our Cooper Tires big stop of the game and it was big just when it looked like the Huskies were going to turn the tide bounces off the hands of Gottlieb there's Mattingly thank you very much and Mattingly's been a very active player ever since getting his first start against Arizona State he had to come off the field because he's a tackling and playmaking machine Brink steps up he's going for it all on first down and that time Brink just 
seemed to lose the grip on the ball a little bit. He had a man out in front. It was Gibson who was clearly out in front, but Brink couldn't quite deliver it as he has. See if you think this ball slipped out of his hand a little bit. Well, it happens every once in a while to Alex Brink where the ball will slip on it. And it certainly looked like it happened right there. Very wobbly pass. Roy Lewis was in the area. So it's second down and 10. And the give this time is to McCall. McCall bounces outside. And the stop as he crossed the 35-yard line. A gain of about four. Roy Lewis makes the tackle for Washington. And there's been a very soft edge all night that's there for the Cougs when they want to run the football. In the zone running plays, their running backs can start toward the line of scrimmage and always hit that edge. And it's pretty much been good for four or five yards or even more in this football game with the Huskies chasing. Now an empty backfield, five receivers for the Cougs on third down and six. Blitz comes, Brink unloads, catch made, short of the first down, I believe. Bumpus made the catch. About a yard short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down. I doubt the Cougs will go here. Bumpus set down maybe a little bit too quick that time. And will stop the yard short of the first down. Husky, or rather, the Huskies came with a blitz that time. Not a very disciplined route by Bumpus, but he was trying to bail his quarterback out with the blitz. Oof. That snap, but it's picked up nicely and driven out of there by Ballman. And this is going to go inside the 10 yard line of the 9 yard line. It was Reed Forrest, now Ballman on the punt inside the 10, 50 yarder. Six minutes, 40 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter, 28 to 20 ball game. Now Washington State ahead of the Washington Huskies. The Huskies will start right at the 10 yard line. Empty backfield now. Four wideouts, two tight ends. Pump fake. Rocket was going to air it out. Now he does air it out. And Russo can't quite catch up to it. That was good coverage that time, actually, on both sides of the field. Devin Giles defending Russo, but I believe the primary was over on the other side. Devin Giles was all over Russo, but Locker did a good job of putting it out in front here, looking all the way back to the back side. And there you see Russo had a real shot at that ball coming up underneath Giles and reestablishing position. And that right out of the reach of Russo. I'll tell you what, I guarantee you in this offseason, Jake Locker is going to be watching film day and night, knowing when and where to throw the football. And he will improve throwing that deep ball. Locker this time rolls to his left, now throws too tall, intended for Reese. And Reese takes a shot, and that draws a flag. Alfonso Jackson popped Marcel Reese after the ball went by him, and that's going to cost the Cougars. Alfonso Jackson is the team barber for the Cougs that time. Giving a little fade to Reese. <laughs> Not yeah. a wanted one. Shaved his beard. <laughs> Free fades for everybody. <laughs> That's not a good play for the Cougs. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit, defense number 18. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. This is something that can really change momentum in a rivalry game. There you see Reese, ball way over his head. He's actually turned to face Jackson, and that is just not a smart play. No, it's a good call by the officials. Got to keep your emotions in check in a rivalry game. That is the first personal foul, which is a bit surprising in a rivalry game. Gives the Huskies life, and here is a reverse this time to Goodwin. And Goodwin will pick up about nine, stop short of the 35-yard line. Hussein Abdullah on the tackle for Washington State. I believe Goodwin is playing for Curtis Shaw. Those are usually the plays that Curtis Shaw gets but he did not play well in the first half with a couple drops and a couple penalties. So Goodwin's in there doing his thing and Washington has really slowed down offensively for when they came out firing in the first quarter. Second short now though for the Huskies. And 
did to Rankin. Rankin trying to take it outside. He's going to get the first down across the 35, short of the 37-yard line. Kendrick Dunn makes the tackle, but it'll be a Washington first down. Five minutes, 41 seconds remaining here in the third period. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, Jim Watson here in Seattle on a chilly night, but there was a forecast for some rain. We don't see any indication of that as yet. That's good, because I think it would be snow. It could be. They were talking about that possibly tomorrow morning. A timeout is going to be called by Washington here. First timeout that they've used in the second half. Cougars lead it by eight during select Pac-10 football games on FSN this year. A Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance was chosen. Pontiac awarded the school $1,000 through its general scholarship fund. Here was the one that was determined by your votes as the game-changing performance of the year. Dwight Tardy taking it 51 yards for the deciding score against UCLA. 82.2% of the votes. The Cougars had the winning performance during the game against UCLA on the 27th of October. Courtesy of Pontiac. WSU will receive $10,000 through its general scholarship fund. We thank Pontiac for their support of the program and the Pac-10 conference throughout the year. Pontiac, official performance machines of the Pac-10. Five minutes, 25 seconds left here in the third quarter. Cougars by eight. Huskies looking at a first down. Just short of the 37-yard line. Brandon Johnson now the tailback for Washington. Play fake. Locker going to go up again with a man in his face. Throws it wide open as Reese at the 25, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Huskies. I would say it probably was a good timeout. That's a momentum swing. The Cougs did not want to give up. Locker finally connecting on a deep route. And that ball hung up there. Really stood in the face of pressure. Did Jake Locker play fake not doing much? And that is done right in his face. Reese coming from the other side of the field to catch that ball in the corner. And totally uncontested to the end zone is Marcel Reese. And the Huskies will go for two to try and tie this game at 28. Coaches these days talk about explosion plays. You can't allow explosion plays. Well, the Cougs just did. That'll get the crowd going again. Paul Homer in the backfield with Locker. Two-point conversion try to tie the game. Locker rolls to his right. He throws end zone, and it's caught for the two-point conversion by Reese. And just like that, we're tied. And that was a great individual effort by Jake Locker. Running to his right, throwing it back across his body. Pretty good help by Homer out there, but he's on his own. And then slings that ball right back across the field. Reese was stopped right in that spot. And just amazing effort from an amazing freshman athlete, Jake Locker. Look at that ball. Wow. That is not an easy ball to throw. And there's a lot of things that he does that kind of make you shake your head, especially when he throws it deep and misses people. And there's a lot of stuff that make him still look like a freshman. And we've seen it all year playing on the road at the Pac-10. Jake Locker has struggled in certain aspects of the game. but. Every once in a while, and it uh, happens more often than not, he does something that's absolutely amazing that defies logic, and that, that was a play that was one of those plays. We started this broadcast by saying how many of these Apple Cup games are close games. The last five decided by a total of 21 points. Here we are, just over five minutes remaining in the third quarter, and we are tied once again at 28. Kick this time to Dillon, and Dillon up the middle. Stays on his feet and now is dropped at about the 22-yard line. Stevens on the tackle. Let's take a look back. Back to 1975, the Apple Cup of 1975. Washington today, they had 27 to 14, but Washington's Al Burleson 
intercepts a pass in the rain. He goes 93 and sets it up for Warren Moon as a pass bounces off of Tony Heath into the hands of Spider Gaines, and Gaines goes 78 yards for a Washington touchdown. That was a game where momentum really swung. This one, it's happening too, and that penalty by Alfonso Jackson in the last possession for the Huskies, that personal foul really, really hurt the Cougs. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Ivory, bounces it outside, and gets ahead across the 30, the 31-yard line. Good first down yardage, to pick up about six. Darren Harris on the tackle for the Huskies. That edge is still very available to the Cougs when they need it on first down. And if they're getting five, six, seven yards on first down, it's gonna be awful hard to slow down this offense. There you see Locker coming through in that last series, helped out by the penalty by Alfonso Jackson, but a great job of the Huskies offense taking advantage of that mistake by Washington State. And getting a couple big plays, especially the two-point conversion. Cougars have been able to run just enough to allow Brink to throw the ball. Brink straight back, five-step drop, throws, and this one is almost intercepted. Off the hands that time of the intended receiver, who was Ben Woodward. Woodard, rather, with the ball. Woodard almost had it bounce into the hands of the Husky, and that would have changed things completely. Well, that's what happened to Gottlieb, the Washington tight end. Very costly when those kind of things happen. It's not good when you miss the ball and it goes up in the air. Everybody gasps. Third down and four now. Big play right here for Washington State. The crowd back involved in this game at Husky Stadium. Brink straight back. He's going deep. And it's caught by Gibson, but I think he's out of bounds. And that is the ruling, and I doubt that this will be reviewed. I think he clearly was out of bounds. There's no force out rule in college football. Brandon Gibson's body drifting out of bounds there. Not a bad ball for Brink, but just too far. And Davenport was there in a hurry as well. Really going for it on third down there, and I don't know if that's going to serve the Cougs well, but that is their game going vertical. Now the onus is going to go back on their defense against Jake Locker. That's the first three and out for Washington State since their first three possessions. Russo will be the deep man, Forrest to punt. Forrest drives this one, Russo. I thought it called a fair catch. And I think the officials may agree, and they do. They're going to call that a fair catch. Both these quarterbacks in this game, we talked about it in the open, performing pretty well. Here's Locker showing what he can do with his legs. And it is amazing. And then the long, fluttering pass to Reese, which really changed the momentum of this football game. Jake Locker playing for the first time with that hurt neck and head. Looks pretty good. Hasn't had a lot of success connecting on the deep ball, but that one to Reese, it's all it takes. You can see 25 touchdowns Locker was responsible for this year. 11 running, 14 passing. There's a pitch this time and a pass and a throwback to Locker. And now Locker going to run with it, 25-30, 35-40 and out of bounds. So dipping into the trick bag was Ty Willingham, and it works very successfully, a gain of 15. And it only works successfully because of Jake Locker's ability. Andy Mattingly is all over this play and has great position to make the play on Jake Locker. But Jake Locker, look how quickly he can get outside and hit top speed. Two steps, and he's going unbelievable ability to use his feet and run with his legs and then get upfield very physically has Jake Locker and you just got to be amazed with this guy and his legs and I guess his neck is okay look pretty comfortable yeah. there well he's really deceptive I mean, you just don't think of him as being a speed guy and yet he is people better start give this time to rank and trying to get outside not going to happen it's Johnson Johnson was not able to turn the corner. He's going to lose a couple of yards. And this really is a strange changing of the guard in the Apple Cup. Jake Locker, a redshirt freshman. Most people consider him to be the savior of what is a very proud football program at the University of Washington. And I believe that he's going to be in a Heisman contention.
type of deal eventually as his career unfolds up here in Seattle. And then you have Alex Brink, who is the dean of Pac-10 quarterbacks. Great numbers, and he's put on a real show so far tonight. But a guy that takes a lot of heat and is under a lot of pressure because he's never led his team to a bowl game. It's, it's been exactly as advertised. This game. Here's Locker, steps up, now a run. 40-45 midfield. Take it on people to the 45-yard line. Didn't run out of bounds either, did he? No. <laughs> I don't think he's got it in him. And Mattingly trying to get a shot at Locker. And this is not a called running play. Jake Locker just taking it into his own hands. And you see him turn that corner and put his head down right on the sideline. And that very eerily reminiscent of the play versus Oregon State that we saw buried where he was stretching off the field. Yes, it was. Waddy? We talked about it at the top. We didn't think Jake could run out of bounds when he had it. Hey, after this play, I'll give you my take on why I think one guy gets a lot of respect and the other guy has to earn it. All right, once more, it's Johnson straight ahead. Give it to us, Waddy. All right, well, listen, Jake Locker is a Seattle kid. Now, Ferndale is way north. It's up near Bellingham, close to the Canadian border. But people in Seattle watch this kid play in high school. He's a junior. He went to the state final, and they lost. But he kept them in the game on both sides of the ball as a senior. He came back and won it. So he was a ready-made package. He, he was already road-tested when he got to Seattle. Meanwhile, Alex Brink came in, kind of an unknown. Remember, he's from Eugene, Oregon. So it's one of ours and one of theirs. <laughs> That's right. As a matter of fact, as, as heated a rivalry as this is, there are people here in Seattle who feel that the rivalry with Oregon is even more intense. There's a lot of bitterness there. Here's Locker again. Straight run. Look at Rock Locker. Running through people, over people, down to the 30-yard line. There's one rule of thumb that's very general in college football, and that is if a defensive lineman gets his hands on you, you're going down. Mullinex gets his hands on Locker, and Locker runs right through the arms of Matt Mullinex, 260 pounds, and takes it right upfield. That was a called run play. Not only does he have speed, but he has unbelievable power. There you see Mullinex just sliding right off the back of Jake Locker, the freshman. Locker give to Rankin this time. Rankin goes through the same hole as Locker went through last time, inside the 25. And all of a sudden, I mean, this game has had all the ebb and flow that you could expect. And right now, it's all back on the side of the Huskies. Well, we talked about it. This is the bowl game for both teams. And even though they both have seven losses, a victory tonight will make things seem a lot better in 2007 than they really were. And you see the history, first meeting in 1900, way back in the day. Five to five tie. We mentioned earlier touchdowns were worth five points. How did you know that? I read it. I did not know that. I read it. Why did they change it to six? That's a good question. You know? I don't have that in. Five's a nice, you know, odd number. <laughs> Rankin carried that time, and Patua Tua makes the tackle. Well, not only has Washington snatched back momentum in this football game, but this drive, they've really solidified some things, especially Locker's toughness running the football. They've been eating clock and keeping the Cougs out there for a while and, and really beating up on it. Third down now. And the scoreboard says two, but it's really third and three. Here's a pitch to rank and short side sweep. And great tackle by Kensock in the open field. Short of the first down, and now again, Ty Willingham is in a place where he's got a decision to make. Remember, they have tried on fourth down their last seven times. They have been unsuccessful. That was a great play by Kensaw. He's not a big guy, only 5'8", 158 pounds. A senior out of Spokane, and Kensaw stepped up there and made a big tackle on Rankin. There's the kicker. Looks as though Ty's going to go for it here, though. Fourth down and a yard, just a little bit more than a yard. They got the power unit in there with Luke Kravitz. And Locker will go from under center. Homer up on the wing. Give it to Kravitz. First down. Mattingly makes the stop, but it is a Huskies first down. Well, Casey Belika, the big guard, pulled around. Kravitz did a great job of getting in behind him. You're going to see him number 72 pop up there. And he does a good job getting up and leading Kravitz through the hole. 
I like Kravitz in short yardage. He's been very effective tonight. See how Kravitz gets right underneath that guard, and even though Belika doesn't block anybody, just his presence in there, that giant body going through really helps the back out. They always tell you, get underneath that guard in short yardage. Look at that Moha. Yeah, that's fashionable wow. these days. We come to the end of the third quarter. It's going to be wild, Barry. No question. Tie game at the end of three quarters. Huskies 28, Cougars 28. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back. Again, the fourth and final period under a full moon. What a night here in Seattle. Beautiful and very, 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 very cold. Tied at 28. Locker gives to Johnson. Johnson will get about a yard. Oh, well, we talked about offense, and there's been a lot of offense, but when you start to look between offense and return yardage, we've got just about, in fact, we have over 1,000 yards in yeah, this game. 456 for Wazoo, 585 for UW. 1,041 yards in this football game. And there you see the rushing and the passing. Wow. That's a lot of ground being beaten up. It's been an exciting game. Tired legs out there. It's, a, it's just a typical Apple Cup. I've had the pleasure of doing this game several times. Here's a reverse to Russo. He's the 20. Gets the 15-yard line knocked out of bounds. A lot of running for a gain of three. Now big third down play upcoming here for the Huskies. Giles is the man who made the stop. Now mark it at the 15-yard line. And it'll be third down and six. And as the momentum is swung back to the Huskies in this football game, it's really come on the toughness and legs of Jake Locker and the plays he's been able to make in broken plays and some called run plays for it. 12th play of the drive. Locker rolls to his right. Now he steps up. Now he'll run at the 20, at the 50. He dodges a man inside the 10 to the five yard line. What a play by Jake Locker. How about that? Well, Jake Locker just put another page onto the highlight film. The people of the city of Seattle and the state of Washington absolutely love this guy. And he has so many expectations. It's like Charles Dickens is writing his life story. Look at him run the football. Patua Toa misses him. Trent misses him. Finally, Giles knocks him out of bounds. But another electrifying run. Not only is he very fast, but he's got fantastic feet. And then he also runs with a great deal of power. As far as his run game goes, he's the entire package. Here's Rankin this time. Rankin's going to be stopped. Might have gained a yard. Locker picked up 11 on that last play. And Locker, I think, is, is shaken up a little bit. It looked to me like he landed on his elbow. It might have jarred that shoulder a little bit. Or maybe, oh, it's a thumb, it looks like. Well, you make seven guys miss. Sometimes it makes you a little bit tired. And Locker is human. We've seen him hit and, and uh, knocked out of a football game. Let's go down to Jim Watson. Waddy, what he got? Yeah, Barry, he's been doing this. Jake Locker's been doing this a couple times on the drive. It's not the first time he steps outside the huddle. He did it at the end of the quarter. Second down at the four-yard line. Rankin again. Not going to get there. Mullinex makes the stop. And Barry, I don't know if he's injured or if he's not feeling well, but you can see that he keeps taking a minute to himself. He walks out of the huddle and he kind of crouches down, almost like he's just trying to catch his breath. He's got blood on his pants. He's a warrior. There's no question about that. And the Huskies would love to be able to get this ball in the end zone here on third down without having to utilize the legs of Jake Locker. You know, there's only a certain amount of hits a guy can take, and Locker certainly has taken a whole bunch this football season. Kravitz and Homer line up in the backfield in an eye formation. This is Kravitz, and he's not going to get there. He'll be stopped short of the one-yard line, and now what do you do? I think you got to take the points here, do you not? Absolutely. I believe that they will kick it, but Locker's still standing out there on the field. Ty Willingham with a, a very important decision. One of those decisions that you can be criticized for. They want to call a timeout. It will leave the Huskies with only one timeout remaining. 12-18 left in the ballgame. Tied at 28. Fourth down coming up. 
tied at 28, 12 23 remaining. Play of the game upcoming, fourth down and goal at the one yard line. And it appears as though the Huskies will go for it. 15 play drive, 72 yards. It's taken seven minutes. What do you do? Put it in the hands of the guy who's done it all day long? I would kick the field goal, but since they're going for it, you got to get Locker out in space and let it make people miss and score. This could be a quarterback draw with this formation. Homer is lined up in the backfield. And now the Husky, the uh, Cougars are going to call a timeout. So the Cougars will use their first timeout. Huskies have only one timeout remaining. Well, we want to remind you that you have your chance to win two tickets to the 2008 Rose Bowl game in Pasadena. All you have to do is log on to www.pac10.org to enter. Hurry now, log on, www.pac10.org for your chance to win a couple of ducats for the Rose Bowl. I think it's going to be USC, Ohio State. That's what I believe it's going to be SC Ohio State this year in the Rose Bowl. That, you can't ask for a better matchup than that. Big Ten, Pac-10, New Year's Day, Pasadena. It's a football lover's dream. Great matchup here. The Pac-10 conference standings as, uh, as they are right at the moment. You know, you got to really give credit to what Mike Riley has done at Oregon State. I mean, that's a team that was buried early in the year, had a couple of tough losses. Right now, they're, they're a game out of first place in the conference, 7-4 and four overall. Same story last year with Oregon State. Suffered a devastating loss to Boise State, embarrassed on national television, and then they bounce back. They beat USC and end up winning 10 games. So here we go, fourth down. The ball at the one-yard line. Same formation. They got Kravitz up on the wing. Homer in the backfield with Locker. Locker will take it himself, and he's in. Dance with what brung you. Well, they tried to score a touchdown without Jake Locker, and finally on fourth down, they got to give it to him. He's a little beat up, but still playing very well. They use Paul Homer as a lead blocker, and he does a great job putting a giant block on Kendrick Dunn, and that allows Locker to find a hole and dive into the end zone. This guy knows when to dance. He knows when to put his head down. He is a fantastic football player. He can play every position on the field other than O-line and D-line. Drive for point is up and good by Perkins, and it's a 35 to 28 ball game. We got a world of time to go in this one. 12, 18 left. Stay where you are. We're coming back. Ray Sparling, Sunset Chev, how's business? We are tied for number one for the state of Washington. <laughs> Seven point ball game now. Washington in front with 12 18 remaining to be played. Ivory's going to be the deep man to receive this kick. Well, you want to know how important Jake Locker is to this Washington offense. He's run for 72 yards and two touchdowns on 11 carries, plus that crucial third down play. He's passed 10 of 28, 196 yards and a touchdown, and he's caught a ball for 15 yards. So he's accounted for 283 yards of offense and three touchdowns. You can tell he's a little tired. He's got a cut on that right thumb, but he's still battling. He is this Washington football team. Yeah. I mean, you, you say that, and, and you know it's not an individual sport, but it's okay to say that about a guy like Jake Locker because he's so beloved by the community and his teammates. He's the perfect football player. Here's Ivory on the turn. Caught at the 20, gets forward to about the 23, and that'll be it. That's where the Cougs will start. 77 yards away from the Washington end zone. Let's go to Jim Watson. Buddy. Yeah, Barry, we were right. This happened at the end of the third quarter on that drive. He hurt that thumb. Now, they were working on it, and I wasn't sure if it was more than just a cut. They were taking a long time looking at it. In the meantime, he's sucking the oxygen tank. Now they're doing peroxide on both hands. They finally bandaged him, so there was a little blood. Barry, you saw it on his pants. That's where it came from. The guy's not 100%, but, man, how do you not love this kid? Yeah, I was going to say, I'll take him at about 85. So now the onus falls on Alex Brink. Here's a screen pass. Forget it. Great job that time by E.J. Savannah. He has just not been fooled on that screen tonight. And you can really say the momentum of this game changed with the personal foul on Alfonso Jackson a few drives ago. That time Savannah making the decision when that ball was in the air and Ivory taking a big hit from the Sam linebacker for the Huskies. 
played very well. He's played well all year, just a sophomore. Second down and 12. Brink straight back, steps up, throws, and complete off the hands of Fishnick. That'll be third down and long, but the Cougs really do not need at all as a three and out. No, the momentum of this game has changed completely. And Phil Doba trying to find something, some way. And Alex Brink has got to do it to get these Cougs back in the football game. And it'll probably have to be one of those big chunks of yardage offensively that they've been ripping off in this game, but they haven't done it in a while now. So third down and 12. Brink straight back, has to step up away from pressure. He's in trouble, and down he goes. And the Cougs will have to give it up. Third sack of the ball game for Washington, and it was Daniel Teo Nesheim who did it that time. He's played a very good game as well on that edge for the Huskies. Brink pretty nifty with his feet, avoiding the first man, but once Nesheim gets his hands on Brink, he goes down in a hurry. Alex Brink, the dean of Pac-10 quarterbacks, got great numbers, but he's not as strong as Jake Locker. Huskies should get the ball in good field position once again. Forrest hits this one and will hit at midfield and take a pretty good bounce so far as the Cougars are concerned. It'll wind up at around the 32-yard line. 49-yard punt, no return. 10-29 left in the ball game. 35-28. Huskies fell out the ball when we come back. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera, the new value frontier. And brought to you in part by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. And the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the O. Washington takes over and they'll have it at the 32-yard line. Locker under center. Play fake. Locker will go up on first down. Throws too tall. Over the head of Reese and underthrown for Russo. I'm not really sure who the receiver was. And throwing it there on first down when Washington's trying to work the clock. I guess they feel like it's going to be a shootout. And they just got to keep going after it. Washington's offense has been playing very well. Last 20 plays, 163 yards, two touchdowns for Washington State. Six plays, zero yards. So things have definitely changed in this football game and unfolded this way in the second half. Quentin Daniels in the game for one of the few times today. Split to the far side. And Locker this time on the fake. And Locker's got real 40-45 out of bounds. To the sidelines once more, Jim Watson, what are you? Barry, I'm watching Jake Locker take oxygen during that last break when he was over on the bench. And it occurred to me, remember what Tim Lupano, the offense coordinator, told us about eight weeks ago? When Jake Locker runs, he holds his breath. You guys remember that? I do remember that. And that's why he was stepping out of the huddle, because he was gassed. That's it's right. important to breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let that be a lesson to the well, kids it, out there. It's that old golf joke. Do you breathe in or breathe out on your putts? And that's all you're thinking about the rest of the round. <laughs> that's right. No, we talked to him about it, too, and he said he, he just doesn't think about it. It's just something he said if he thought about it, he could probably do, but he never thinks about it. Rankin picks up about a yard. Greg Trent on the tackle. The second down, the ball at the 48-yard line. And it doesn't look like anybody on this football team right now for Washington can run but Jake Locker. And in that last rush, not the one to rank it there, but the last one, he did go out of bounds instead of taking that hit from Alfonso Jackson. So something might be computing. This time three wide receivers, a slot right formation. Locker will throw and throws too wide that time. Intended for Quentin Daniels. Daniels a senior playing in his last game here at Husky Stadium. Ty Willingham trying to find something here to get himself a first down. Third down and long now. The clock's not really a factor in the game yet. 930 remaining. There's Tim Lapano. He's the offensive coordinator for Ty Willingham. He's been around this conference. He was with Bill Doba at Washington State. He's been out at Cal. He was at Oregon State with Dennis Erickson. 
Locker straight back out all day to throw it. Now he's going to step up and run. Midfield flag down. And Locker's not. He's inside the 35 to about the 33, but a flag thrown all the way back to the 40-yard line. Andy Matting, they made the stop, but once again, for a big guy, he becomes invisible. Well, he's just very fast. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, he can get upfield in a hurry. He can get upfield in the middle of the field, and he can jump outside, but he just has that ability. He's like a tailback. Holding offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty, replay, third down. Locker picked up 20 yards on that, but maybe this was the reason. Cody Habin, you see him there, number 71, and he's holding Rapati Patuatoa, who almost made the tackle on Locker. It's hard not to marvel at the guy when he runs the football, yeah, I'll tell you. Right. No, it really is. I mean, he's, he's a big presence, and yet he sheds people. It's penalties like that that don't seem giant in a football game, but that could force a punt here or maybe even a turnover on third and long for Washington and change the momentum in this game again back to Washington State. That's all it takes in these emotional rivalry games. And you already talked about it. The turning point in this game was Alfonso Jackson's personal foul penalty. Here's a give this time to good win. And, uh, he's not going to get very much, about four yards. So, in fact, the Huskies will have to give it back to the Cougars. Washington State will try to turn momentum once more. Again, time is not yet a factor. It's a seven-point ball game. There's eight minutes and 35 seconds remaining to be played. Bumpus is going to be the deep man. Bumpus can go. You can see three career punt returns for scores. High twisting kick and a fair catch called by Bumpus. He makes it short of the 20-yard line. Good kick that time. By Bumpus. And so the Cougs will start at their 19-yard line. Let's go to the sideline once more, Jim Watson. What are you? Barry, UW fans always argue about the greatest coach in school history, Don James. Of course, the dog father, Jim Owens, Jim Lambright. The best ever is this guy, Gilmore Doby, 1908 to 1915, compiled a record of 58, 0, and 3. But he also had kind of an interesting reputation. I'll tell you more about it after the snap. Yeah, it's a, it is an interesting story. I know that story. And We'll get back to Jim Watson so that you can hear it. Here's a draw play this time and with plenty of room. Is Ivory, look out. He's at the 40, 45, close to midfield. What is, go back and talk about Coach Doby. Yeah, Gilmore Doby had a reputation as a sullen and joyless man. He berated his players, <laughs> ignored the administration, and openly hated the media. And this was 80 years ago. Gloomy Gill was his nickname. He had a feud with the school president, Harry Cesalo, that led to his firing after the 1915. And the night he left, thousands of students stood in front of his little house on 14th Avenue to deliver a three-minute standing ovation. And Doby told him, hey, kids, a football coach only has two destinies, dead or fired. <laughs> One out of two. Gibson cannot hang on. Roy Lewis defending Pop Gibson right as he caught the ball. In fact, he was fired. Not only was he fired, he was undefeated. Look at that coat, though, Barry, on Dope. You gotta like that, I huh? mean, that's the best looking coat I've ever seen. Look at that coat. The problem is, I think it was the skin of one of his athletes. He was really mean. <laughs> How does a guy get a coat like that? Really mean. Call me a tailor. Look at that. And in the meantime, Washington State has had a little bit of success here offensively. That holding penalty. Turn momentum a little bit. The nice draw by Ivory. Ivory had 31 on that draw. The ball at midfield now. Brink going to go up. He's got time. Now he runs out of time, and he is going to be sacked back at the 40-yard line. That's a coverage sack. Grayson Gunheim gets him. And now we've got a flag down at the 40-yard line, and I think this may negate that sack. We'll see. Grayson Gunheim, a very strong player. Both ends playing very well tonight for Washington. Grayson Gunheim and Daniel Teo Nesheim. Holding. Defense number 39. Wow, what a Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Well, there's another one of those penalties you're talking about. It was Nate Williams, and he was holding on to Devin Frischneck. The tight end way out there on the edge, way away from the play as Gunheim was making the sack on Brink. And another very costly penalty hurting the Huskies and giving the Cougs light. The last seven minutes of this game should have a lot of different turns. Momentum has changed 
a few different times. Remember, Washington started out the game with the big kickoff return, and Washington State had to take it back from there. Now the Cougs have it at the 40-yard line with a first down, a new life. Brinks straight back with time. He throws, caught this time. Caught on the run, and goodbye! Gibson takes it to the house. Touchdown, Cougars. 45 yards. That shows some character, doesn't it, on that guy's part? Taking it back is Alex Brink. First the penalty. You're going to see Nate Williams out there holding on to Frischneck. Way away from the play. That would have changed everything. Big sack by Gunheim there. And then Alex Brink comes back with the strike. Beautiful throw right into the hands of Gibson. Never breaks stride and showing great speed. I guess his legs are healthier. We see Gibson limping around all season. Yeah. He's really performing tonight. Had a heel problem. Abdul Mohammed ties it. It's 35 Huskies, 35 Cougars, 729 remaining to decide the 100th version of the Apple Cup. And once again, Brink dropping back just five steps, turns, looks off, delivers perfectly to Gibson. And there you see the eyes of the rivalry. A wide receiver taking off to the house and tying up the game. And there you see Brink. He's not willing to give up for the little guy, the freshman, Jake Locker. The old guy, the dean of the Pac-10 quarterback, still has a little bit of a show to put on in his career. And you saw he's got a couple of scars, too. he got a big patch up over his <laughs> eyebrow. <laughs> this is a great battle. Well, we talked earlier about this, but Brick picking up where he's left off in other Apple Cups. He's got 10 touchdown passes, has not thrown an interception in four Apple Cups. And we saw him last night. He was very loose. He was relaxed. He was sitting in the hotel with his teammates feeling good they were smiling and, and joking around and he's just a very good leader he's again the dean of pac-10 quarterbacks he's been doing it a long time very smart player went out at home in a way that he was very embarrassed about with the six interceptions against oregon state last week but he has performed tonight in husky stadium this time they dribble it down short again it's picked up by gottlieb and gottlieb We'll get it across the 40-yard line, so much more. The Huskies will have good field position. Once more, we go to Jim Watson. Waddy? Barry just trying to keep it balanced. Washington State has won just one Rose Bowl in its history, 1916. They beat Fritz Pollard and the Brown Bruins 14-0, and that was the coach, William Lone Star Dietz, who was out of the Carlisle Indian School. The Cougs not only won the game, but they made some money each morning leading up to the game in Pasadena. The Wazoo players served as extras in the feature film Tom Brown of Harvard. It was terrific. I got it on Netflix. Each guy got a hundred bucks. Wazoo finished the year a perfect 7-0. That was just a ceremonial headdress. Actually, Deeds wore the classic coaching attire, silk hat, Prince Albert cutaway coat, striped pants, gloves, and of course, a walking stick. That's what we're wearing up here right now. <laughs> Absolutely. And in fact, Petros has, Petros has one of those headdresses at home. That ball's thrown away by Rankin. They like to throw the ball with Rankin. He had the big touchdown pass against Boise State earlier this year. And he's very comfortable throwing the ball in the run. I mean, those coaches from Washington, Washington State, a lot of style back in the day. I mean, wow. Carlisle University is where Jim Thorpe came Yes, it from. is. Yes, it is. They had a good team for a few years. Thorpe? Yeah. That's good. Hit you with a discus. <laughs> or baseball. Rankin out of the backfield in a bunch of formation. I haven't seen this set all night. In trouble, Locker throws quickly. Ball's caught by Russo. Russo midfield, 45, 40, and down to the 38-yard line. It's a track beat. <laughs> Abdullah on the tackle, first down Huskies. That time, Locker hanging out in the pocket, which he doesn't often do. See, nobody knows what to do with this guy. <laughs> There you see, coming right off that edge was Corey Evans, and he didn't know whether or not to get down and tackle Locker or jump up or wait for Locker to make a move. In the meantime, Locker delivers to Russo, who finds a very nice crease down the middle of the field and takes it up the seam. Gain of 20, here's Rankin, and Rankin will get a couple. Kendrick Dunn, who has quietly had a very effective game from an outside backer position for the Cougs. Just because of that ability, 
that Locker has to jump outside so quickly, whether he's in the pocket or running with the football, it really puts doubt in the mind of all these different Washington State defenders and defenders he's faced all year about whether or not he's going to do that or just hang in the pocket and try to deliver the ball. What he's shown over the weeks on film really causes trouble for opposing defenses. Here's Locker again over the middle, catch made, first down and a fumble. Ball is still loose, still a scramble for it, and the Cougars have it! Second turnover of the ball game. Greg Trent came away with the ball for Washington State. Well, Locker doing a great job hitting an open receiver. Corey Williams is a guy that came away with it, and he has not played a great football game tonight, has Corey Williams, and he fumbles the ball. And that is just a killer. Washington was doing great, moving that ball downfield and running clock. And Williams coughs it up, gives it back to the Cougs, and guess who's back out on the field with his squad? Yeah, Alex that's Frank. right. Cougs will start at the 28-yard line. This is Ivory. I've been trying to get outside, dragged down from behind. Nice play by E.J. Savannah off the back side. And these defensive players for Washington are going to have to step up. Savannah, Nesheim, Gunheim, they need a big play. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings up to 70% of amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the O. Seven out and nine. Dylan came out limping. It's an A for Washington State. Once more, it's Ivory trying to get to the edge. Can't quite do it. Stopped as he crossed the 33-yard line. He did pick up about four. Nate Williams makes the stop. And Ivory gets up really slowly. Well, Ivory's going to have to learn at a certain point when you have that wide field and you're running and running and trying to get to that edge, you've got to put your foot in the ground and take it upfield. Ivory up over 100 yards now, but as you see, he's in some pain. He's been replaced by Kevin McCall. Third down and four. Big play right here for the Cougs. Four of 12 in third down conversions. Crowd really into it. Brick straight back. Throws. Caught once again. First down. Frisch down. And he has made one big play after another tonight. Devin Frischneck has been a little quiet here in the second half. Up until that point, he comes right off the line of scrimmage there and runs an out route mismatch with Savannah on him. Savannah, not bad coverage, but a perfect throw by Brink. And Frischneck, very good hands from the tight end position. He's showing a lot in also, this football game. He also tweaked the knee and he's come out of the game. Woodard. Well, he's not come out of the game. He's going to stay out there. Woodard would come on to replace him. Give this time to the call. Nothing doing. Taylor Nessheim on the stop and a loss of about three. Waddy? Barry, these are two four and seven teams. You have 72,000 people. Everybody is on their feet. It means something. It may not mean something nationally, but regionally, this is all that it's about. You got Butch in the end zone for Washington State going crazy with his band. Harry the Husky on the other side. And you know somewhere, somewhere, Far away, Lone Star Deeds and Gloomy Gill are going at it right now. Absolutely, absolutely. But first, you got to take off those silly feathers. Brink straight back. Now a roll away from pressure. Still keeping his eyes downfield. Now he throws deep and looking for Dylan, but throws it away. And it'll be third down and long. See the timeout situation up in the corner of your screen. Four minutes and seven seconds left in the game. Those are the career Apple Cup numbers for Alex Brink. And we mentioned it earlier, 10 touchdowns. Has not thrown an interception. He's won two out of the three games he has played in. He was a bit shaky to start out this football game, but boy, has he turned it around. He has performed brilliantly tonight in his last game. Right now, 23 of 35, 320 yards, four touchdowns. But a big play here, third and 13. Husky showed blitz, then backed out of it. The throw incomplete. 
Anderson either ran a wrong route. I would expect Anderson probably ran a wrong route. Miscommunication between Brink and the freshman receiver, Jeshua Anderson, who's got a touchdown catch tonight. Brink thought he was going in. Anderson thought he was coming out. And it's fourth down. And the last thing you want to see if you're a Coog is Jake Locker back out on that football field with an opportunity to win. Four minutes, one second left in the game. Forrest will come on and do the punting. Russo is going to be the deep man. He'll stand at about 42 yard line. Forrest drives this one pretty good. Fair catch Russo at about the 24. 40 yard punt, no return. That's the important number. Let's take it back to the Apple Cup 2002 and a Rose Bowl berth was on the line here. Washington State looked ready for victory over the Huskies, but late in the fourth quarter, Washington State leading by three. Nate Robinson got a pick, and then in the third overtime, defensive end Kai Ellis batted a backward pass down, and he got on it. 29-26, Washington beats Washington State with the Cougs on the way to the Rose Bowl. This could be a very defining moment, just like back then for Jake Locker. If he can take his team on a winning drive here, the Huskies would have great momentum going to Hawaii and an opportunity to spoil their undefeated season next week. This time Locker does get away. I was to say this time he doesn't get away, still on his feet to the 30-yard line. I mean, it, he's really a marvel. It really just fun to watch. Got to get off the tracks when the train's coming through, and that's what Locker is, and that's how he runs the football. Just cat-like reflexes and, and big speed and great feet and all those things that, that you would want if you were building a football player. The crazy thing is, this guy's a quarterback. Hussein Abdullah finally makes the play. But we could be seeing big Apple Cup history from this freshman, Jake Locker, right now. Second down and four. Here's the option and a pitch to Rankin. And Rankin trying to get to the edge. Can't quite do it. He did get a little something out of it, though, about a yard. Corey Evans on the tackle. Good job that time to contain by the Washington State Cougars to string that play out just enough. Well, running the option right there. First time we've seen it. Two minutes left. A little under three minutes left in the football game. That is a very iffy time to call an option play with the ball moving around and pitches and stuff like that. A lot of guts from Tim Lopano and Ty Willingham. Third down and two now. And they go with an empty backfield, five wideouts. Locker, flagged down, ball's batted down. I will see about the flag. Mattingly batted it down. That's his third of the game. And if this is against the Huskies, I would expect it would be declined, and that would force Washington to punt it back to the Cougars. But we'll see. Andy Mattingly has been fantastic in this football game. Interceptions, batted balls, lots of tackles. He's been great. I think all the linebackers actually for Washington State Mattingly. Kendrick Dunn's had a nice game. Greg Trent, Corey Evans. This is going to go against Illegal the Illegal shift. Offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. So the Cougars will get it back. And with 226 left, the Cougars are in a very good position here. Cougs have two timeouts left. Washington just won. Bumpus will be the deep man. Ball to the punter. Ballman hits this pretty good. Really turned it over. Bumpus back to the 15-yard line. He called a fair catch. I'm not sure he really wanted to, but he did. And so it's going to be a long field for the Washington State Cougars. Two minutes, 18 seconds remaining to be played for Bill Doba's Cougs. Well, you saw that Locker had his opportunity to take this game and win it with a final drive and with a penalty and a batted ball. The Huskies weren't able to do it. Now it's Alex Brink's turn to make history in the Apple Cup and, and do something. As if he already hasn't done enough. He's played fantastic. I'd say he has. After, and you mentioned earlier, a bit of a shaky start. A couple of years there. ago. Yeah. 2005. He's open for deja vu. There's a pitch this time to McCall. McCall steps out of bounds short of the 20 yard line. Game three, maybe four yards. Yeah. 
Ivory not available to the team right now. He got banged up, and now he comes back into the ball game. It'll be second down seven. Cougars had a great drive at the end of the first half under very similar conditions. Swing pass this time for Ivory. Ivory needs a block and gets it. And he will be stopped short of the first down at about the 24-yard line with two minutes and three seconds remaining and a third and two upcoming. What the Cougs are going to do in this situation, what Mike Levinson of the offensive coordinator is going to call will be very interesting. Do they try to get the ball to Frischneck? been pretty good for them at tight end in this football game on a on a third and short do they run the ball with ivory trying to hit that soft edge well they mark it actually back in the 18 yard line so it's third and three at the 23 yard line but about third and three Brink gonna go up it's a short drop now he has to bounce it outside and Brick throws and a catch is made by Bumpus first down across the 40 yard line what a play by Alex Brink well, we've seen Jake Locker do it in this game. Roll out and then throw it back across his body. We've seen Brink do it too. This time, Brink really running for his life. Jumps and throws all the way back to Michael Bump City Bumpus, the senior out of Culver City, California. And that is a big play, the biggest one for Bumpus in this football game. Great communication between him and his quarterback. Eight of 18 in the first down. Clock continues to tick down. Brink. Steps up, flag is down, break throws. A catch going to be made, but it's going to be for Knox. Not going to matter. Not going to matter. The play was whistled dead before it got started. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, 55. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Still first down. How many penalties have really told the tale in this game? Well, they've just been very costly, and in a momentum game where there's so much emotion and the rivalry is alive, and I'm not sure these guys forgot about the rivalry halfway through the first quarter. Everybody out there is playing for their lives, and when something like that happens, it's just these little glitches allow for things to change very quickly. So now, first down and 15, and the clock continues to wind. 132, 131, 130. And a draw play. Ivory kicks to the outside of the 40 and will be stopped inbounds at the 42-yard line. He got about five. It's going to be second and ten. But again, the clock continues to wind. Brink trying to hustle people up here, get up to the line of scrimmage, and get a playoff. Cougars still have two timeouts, but they're using a lot of clock here. 108, 107, 106. Brink will go under center, coming down to one minute. Brink straight back to pass. Steps up, throws. Catch is made. First down at the 36 yard line. Bumpus once again. Now they'll hustle up here because the clock will stop while the chains are moved. Gain of 22. Not a bad guy to have the dean of Pac 10 quarterbacks, Alex Brink's, been starting longer than anybody in this conference right now. He is in total control of this football game right now, finding senior receivers, people performing in their last game. Still have two timeouts, they haven't used any here as McCall this time, but McCall hesitated, I thought, a little long. It was a draw play, but I thought he waited a little long. They'll have to burn a timeout here. And the clock has stopped now with 37 seconds. Now from here, you're looking at a 52-yard field goal, so the Cougs are still gonna have to do a little bit of business offensively before they can put it in Abdul Mohammed's hands. Well, you're going to see Bumpus running a slant and getting really skinny down that seam. Perfect throw by Brink, and Bumpus, a very good receiver. Here's the guy on whose foot the game may be decided, Romin Abu Mohammadi. Takes broad shoulders to put a name like that on your back. And you know, Alex Brink may never measure up to Bledsoe. And Ryan Leaf and Rippin and Jason Gesser in the games one type of category and bowl games and stuff like that. But his performance in Apple Cups, I tell you what, has been pretty stellar. And this is a guy that will never be forgotten at Washington State. He is, he's been quite a quarterback. 
Cougars still have a timeout to use, and that's why they ran the football. They knew they had, a time, they had two timeouts to take. They were going to save one. Not a bad idea to call a draw play in that situation. They're managing the end of this game pretty well with Brink the quarterback, and they can do so because they have that kind of experience. Play fake, look out. Brink has to unload. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown, Cougars. Gibson with the score. One seconds left. But what great heroics by Alex Brink through this entire football game. Tremendous pressure on Brink with the blitz coming from the outside. Unloads it to the same side of the field. And Brandon Gibson wide open for the easy touchdown. But what a throw and what awareness by the senior quarterback, Alex Brink, and if that's the last throw he ever throws for Washington State, pretty good one. And the extra point just squeaks in, and there are 31 seconds left for the Washington Huskies to get one back. Gibson was wide open, but you've got to give it all up to this guy right here with a man in his face. And a patch over his eye, the young dude out of Eugene, Oregon, senior Alex Brink, dean of Pac-10 quarterbacks, just put his signature on his final Apple Cup. Nice play. It looked like they were going to run a screen to Michael Bumpus, but really slipping Gibson down that seam. And there you see the love from Bumpus to his quarterback. And the emotion of a rivalry game like this that goes down to the wires. 31 seconds long enough for Jake Locker. I don't know. 27 to 40, 399 yards, five touchdowns for Alex Brink. A bad day. Now they'll put Kravitz back as the deep man here for the Washington Huskies. They haven't kicked it deep at all. Here's Rankin. But Rankin is going to be the short man. And they drive this one to Rankin. Rankin takes it at the 27. It comes right back up the gut. He gets to midfield. Don't go anywhere quite yet. 25 seconds remaining in the game. Now keep in mind, the Huskies have only one timeout remaining. But and they need a touchdown. Stranger things have happened. So Locker with a chance to be even a little more dramatic than Alex Brink was. Just a little more. <laughs> Pretty dramatic from Alex Brink, but if Jake Locker can pull something off here, this will go down as the greatest Apple Cup of all time. It's already one of the highest scoring Apple Cups of all time. Locker out of the gut. Has to step up. He's got no place to go. Now he bounces it outside. Still looking downfield. He's going to tuck it away, try to get to the sideline, which he will do with a first down at the 40-yard line. 15 seconds remaining. Locker now up over 100 yards rushing. 103 yards on 14 carries for Jake Locker. And this is not it for the Washington Huskies. If they're not able to come back and force overtime in this game, they are going to Hawaii with a chance to spoil the Warriors' perfect season next Saturday. But Jake Locker still thinking about this one. Trips right set, that bunch formation. Flags fall. I'm not sure they got the man off the field in time. Well, even if they did get him off the field, it's going to be a penalty because you got 12 guys in the huddle. That was Paul Homer trying to get off the field, and that's the difference between having a freshman quarterback and a senior quarterback at the end of a game. They're going to wave it off. They're going to say he was not in the huddle. Well, there you go. So 15 seconds left. The ball at the 40-yard line. Cougars lead it by 7, 42 to 35. Locker trying to pull out a miracle here. Bunch formation to the right side. Locker straight back, four-man rush. Locker steps up, throws deep, throws to the end zone, throws into a crowd, nobody gets it. And he'll have one more, possibly two more chances. A couple more shots at the end zone. 
And that's the best UW can hope for right now. Bill Doba trying to direct his secondary to get back, stay back. They could give up anything underneath. That's the furthest I've ever seen Bill out on the field. Now remember, that the Huskies still do have a timeout. They could throw it over the middle and hope to get one more shot at the end zone. Closer in. And again, we've got whistles before the snap. Doba called a timeout right before the snap there, and things are getting a little chippy on the field. So... Doba calling that timeout to try to settle down his troops. They got nine seconds to survive and get out of Dodge with a seven point win in the 100th Apple Cup. What a fantastic game. From beginning to end. A lot of offense. We expected there might be a lot of offense. 1,342 yards all purpose combined for the two teams. That's a lot of offense. And some big plays defensively. But most of all, the two quarterbacks have been the story. And that's what we talked about at the open of the show. The old guy, Alex Brink, who's seen it all, done it all, and been through a lot in his career. And Ty Willingham's quarterback, Jake Locker, who is really the future of Washington football. Well, we gave you the numbers on Alex Brink, 27 of 40, 399 yards, five touchdowns. The numbers on Locker, he's 12 of 34 passing with one interception and a touchdown, 224 yards, and he's run 14 times for 103 yards and two more touchdowns. And that is the one part of his game that he's gonna have to shore up, which is accuracy with the deep passing routes. And he hasn't had a lot of help from the wide receiver position this year. I think that's pretty obvious to most Husky fans and people that watch Pac-10 football, but He's going to have to improve with his accuracy throwing the football, especially deep. And I trust that he will because everything else about his game is pretty close to perfect. So nine seconds remaining in the game. One, maybe two more shots. Walker straight back again. Four-man rush. Walker steps up, throws it to the end zone. And it is intercepted. And this one is going to be in the books. It is intercepted by Alfonso Jackson, and the Cougars are going to take the Apple Cup back home to Pullman, Washington. What a game, what a moment for Bill Doba and the Washington State Cougars, and as elated as this Cougar team is, so too is this Washington team dejected. Well, Washington has still got another game to play, and they still have some redemption that they can get if they can spoil Hawaii season. But they have no reason to hang their heads. It was a fantastic football game. Washington State coming through in the end. All right, let's go to the field. Jim Watson, a mix of Madden crowd. Waddy. Barry, I had Bill Doba, but he told me he's got to go shake Ty's hand, so we're going to follow him out. Yeah, you know, these guys have a lot of respect for one another. Just a quiet moment with 73,000 people and about four dozen cameras. And, and two really decent guys. And now we'll grab, now we'll grab Bill Doba right here. Bill, talk about it. It was an amazing comeback. You guys were down 10-0. That was like three and a half hours ago. What happened? How'd you do it? Well, the kids, I, I got to give them credit. Just great determination. They just kept hanging in there. Hell of a quarterback. Now, if that's not a signature win for him, the heck with the Cougs. <laughs> I tell you, that's a, he's a great job. It was a great throw at the end to win a ball game. Let's talk about the, the gutsy performance by Alex Brake. People have been down on this guy for four years. The throw to Bumpus, the touchdown throw. You can go through it all night. 399 yards and five had? touchdowns. That's awesome. Well, I, I've been saying it all year. I've been saying it for three years. And the kid's, the kid's great. And he's been, and look at this. I mean, this is a first class. This is a quality rivalry. There's no trash talking or anything else. B this is Bill, I know you're a Coug. Are you coming back next year? Are you going to be the coach of Washington State? Well, you better talk to my athletic director. No, I, I'm going to be there. Let's say run me out. It'll Appreciate it. Congratulations. Yeah. Barry, one of our favorites as always. Absolutely. Bill Doba as the Cougs win it 42-35. to 35. Coming up next in most regions, FSN final score. Those of you watching on FSN Northwest, stay tuned for the College Football Northwest Apple Cup postgame show. Those of you on FSN West, the Kings and the Sharks. Hockey's coming up next. We want to thank our great crew, Jake Cutlow, our producer, Doug Freeman, our director, Dave Sobel, our AD, Glenn Wilhelm, the TD, local boy, home game for him, Jerry Todd on replays, Mark Anklin, our audio director, Mitch Reinhardt, and of course up here in the booth, Jeff Chapman, giving us all the numbers, and this is rookie football season, and Dick Quinlan, 29 years as our spotter. P, it's been a great pleasure as always. Jim Watson, Love this you, is Barry. so much fun. Love you guys. A wrap for us, a wrap for the season for Petros and Jimmy. 
I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.